Here to keep the chase going, share information, spread unity, preserve our heritage and our culture. We're trying to achieve something that you just can't catch. We're always trying to find a better way, trying to make better dogs. That's what Dixie Doggers Podcast is. That's who we are. This episode is brought to you by Rankin Ranch 38 Cattle Company. Mark Rankin specializes in Brahma and Brahma Cross Cattle in Oglethorpe County, Georgia. You can contact him at 407-832-2077. 407-832-2077. Quick podcast announcement. Ty Nordvet has a litter of Catahoula Pit Mix puppies, and he was wanting to place them with homes that have kids that want these dogs. He's located in Central Florida and can drive and meet if needed. You can contact him at 651-249-9246. 651-249-9246. All right, everybody. Going night ride back downtown doing it again. Yes, sir. Another episode of Dixie Dogger Podcast coming to you. We are in the midst of uh, fixing to move the store, so I am super busy all the time. Even worse than before. So if any of you guys are trying to call me, stuff like that, just keep in mind, send me a damn text message and I'll get back with you. And the reason I'm bringing that up is, it ain't like a friend request on Facebook. Something that simple. Yes, I should already do this. But I had a guy that just called me out because we were talking about me being a, a night, the one of the nicest assholes ever. And he was like, yeah, I sent him a friend request and never did accept it. So now... I got to go back to Facebook, find a friend request, and accept it so I'm not a total asshole. Well, this guest we have with us tonight is somebody that we really need on these platforms. He's a, he's with the, he's a younger guy, younger than me anyway, and runs hog dogs, and most of it's self-learned. You know, he, he's not from a, a, a family that that's been hunting for generations. He decided to, to get into this, acquired his stuff and went for it. And he's had a lot of ups and downs in it. And, you know, with, with being able to get these dogs and to, to get everything going and start it and produce it itself. Now he's getting experienced a lot more of the ups than the downs. And so maybe, uh, maybe he can shed some light to the whole circle of this from the beginners to the people who have been doing this for 40 years. Listen to this guy. See, see how this plays out. Listen to his story and see where you could have fit in. See if you could have helped or were you one of the guys that were hindrance? So without further ado, we got Mr. Alan Adams. How you doing, Alan? I'm good. How are you, sir? Doing awesome. Doing good tonight. So, you know, we were talking a little bit while ago before we got before we started recording. Uh and I mean shit, we we about done a podcast in itself there. <laughs> yes, sir. So with this uh this this whole thing that you got going now, about how long have you have you been running these dogs? Um, so hog dog world, I've been running them probably I would say roughly six months, um, if that. Um labs I've you know, been going on uh, about eight years. Um, you know, the start of the hog dog world, I believe in February or March, apparently when it's the best time to run hog dogs, but clearly yeah. for me, that wasn't the case. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been around the dog world for, uh, for quite a while. You know, I'm just newer to the hog dog world. I have been around coon dogs back in Kansas. Um, but other than that, yeah, the hog dog world, just about six months. Got you. So, all right. With with that being said, I mean, I, I seen your dog down at, at Uncle Earl's in the sportsman class. Uh, that dog five o, look, he looked good. You know, and, <laughs> yes, sir. And and that was the whole whole purpose of having that sportsman class deal is to 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 have it to where it's open for for guys like yourself who are not in the bay pen industry or the bay pen world or whatever. And it gives you something to be able to come out and compete on 
a level that's an even playing field for what you got. And so, so yeah. what did you think about that part? Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, I, I loved it. Jake and uh, his wife, Heather, man, they're, they're great people, you know, um, mm -hmm. real quick. I wasn't, I wasn't knowing them long at all. Maybe, you know, about a month and they invited us over for crawfish. Well, we live right across the river from them, but, uh, back to the, uh, Bay pen world, you know, Cody Jeff Coates is actually the one that got me into the Bay pen world. I didn't even know that was a thing. Wow. Um, shout out to Cody. Yeah. And his son, by the way, is going to be the best dog breeder in the world in the future that guy knows everything about dogs the professor um, yes sir yes sir but uh i i went over and bought a dog my first one ever from one of his buddies and then cody has a little small um a little small business you know selling hog gear and i just happened to scroll by him on facebook and i said hey can i i didn't know anything about what i was buying you know so i bought some stuff from him and uh he said hey man you know keep in touch with me and i did and uh, he told me, you know, hey, Uncle Earl's is coming up. It's the biggest of the biggest of the biggest. He goes, that dog Goose is going to be there. And I'm like, Goose? And, you know, all my buddies in Kansas are like, dude, you're going to see Goose? I'm like, yeah, well, when you got there, no, not trying to talk bad on Randy or anything like that, but it wasn't it, – I, I don't want to word this wrong. It wasn't as exciting right away as you would think because there is so many dogs running and you have no idea – when you're new to this, when that goose dog is coming up, but Randy yeah. Durrell does a great job um, accepting people in and, I guess, welcoming them and showing them his dog and, hey, you want to take a picture with him? Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. He, he, was, he was really nice about that. Um, Jake and Heather, very, very, very helpful. I had no idea what I was doing. Cody was signing me up for all this stuff, and I'm like, who do I pay? You know, I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know the rules or nothing. Um, and then, you know, uncle Pat was there running around <laughs> yeah. complaining about, uh, he's complaining. Saying, complaining, but bickering about, Hey, this dog shouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, everybody starts giving me the run around. That's when I really became to like uncle Pat because he's, man, that guy's very informational, but there is one gentleman. And if someone knows, please let me know. Is an older guy that sat by himself, but not in the bleachers. He sat on a chair and I talked with that guy for hours for the every day i was there um and cody told me he was a very well-known man I, I honestly can't remember his name but i wish i could to, to let him know thank you for you know um informing me I'm of rules and of, stuff like that well, well, i'm trying to think of where he was sitting where was he sitting right at? by the tent right by the tent where miss heather was um mm. you, you come up and i think he was sitting with like the triple seven guys or um He's an older, older, older guy, said like probably in his seventies, eighties. Yeah, I got you. And uh, he he was a really, really good guy. Was he running um, dogs that, while he was there? No, sir. He said he used to. Um, okay. So I, Cody probably knows who it is because Cody introduced me to him. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, cool. I, I mean, I'm I'm trying to place. I was trying to think back of who I was sitting there, and I mean, of course, there's so many people in and out. I mean, it's a big, it's a big facility. It's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the atmosphere was great. You know, um, everybody there was very, very, I mean, friendly, like even with how much, you know, drinking and partying, so you would think with that much money on the line and, and everything like that, that it's there would be a back. lot more confrontation. Oh yeah. And it, it, it really is. Randy Durrell, the second night or third night I, I was there. So he goes, Hey man, we're having a concert. Come on over. I'm like, y'all just let anybody come over. And that's the complete opposite from the duck world. You're not seeing that from other duck hunters oh, I know. I, I, I mean, you're, you're not welcome to anywhere because oh you're gonna kill all my ducks I'm like, or, you're, or you're gonna <laughs> fart and mess up my 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 blind or my duck hole <laughs> I, i'm yeah. i'm originally from arkansas in the flyway right there at brinkley uh you know we we back and forth through every rice field wheat field milo field all the flooded timber on white river mississippi river all the bar pits it, I never, never wanted to, to duck hunt after I hit like 16, 15, 16 years old. <laughs> I'm serious, man. It, it was like, it was a huge turnoff. I did not want to be involved around it. It, they may, it was miserable. Yep. Uh, and they and didn't that, have that's, to be. That's where I'm getting to. Did not have uh, to be. Yep. Yep. And, and you're, you're not wrong at all by that. And that's kind of where, um, myself and my wife said it. I mean, it, it's, 
I mean, I guide hunts. So, yeah, there, there, you know, now there's great guys, helps, and but. I'm not saying that just because you, you guide hunts. I'm just saying there, there's great ones in everything you do. But yeah. as a majority, as a majority, it was like, man, these these guys are pretty pretty tight-lipped yeah. and, and they're pretty yeah. harsh. Yes, sir. You're 100% correct. 110% correct. So you, you said you lived across the river from Jake and them. So you're – are you on Louisiana I'm, side? Yes, sir. I'm in Ragley, um, Ragley, Louisiana. A tornado just recently hit, though, oh, and uh, destroyed 18 out of 20 of our kennels that we just literally built. Um, so I, I I don't want to gossip about it, but we had to send our labs to another buddy. That's a mutual friend of ours. Well, that's mean, a trainer as something well. Something happens. I mean, that's a natural disaster. I mean, that's, that's something you yeah, can't yeah. avoid, you know? Yep, and then it happened again, believe it or not. Right after that, mm. the tree fell when we got four more up or something like that. And we're like, we're just waiting until after storm season. Then it flooded out. Damn. So, because we do live on a little slough there in, in Ragley, but it's um, our, our electricity was out for like six days or so, which I know is nothing to these guys down here with hurricanes. I'm going to not at the end of that one. Man, we... But, um... It, we Hold just on. came up here to do it. You're, break, you're breaking uh, up, Alan. Hold on a second. Are you walking around? No, I'm not moving at all. Okay, well, I don't say it was. It started breaking up. I don't know why, but you were, you were, it was yeah, picking no. up real good, and it just started breaking up. So, so well, continue. Oh, on. Yes. So we uh we we had the storm, whatever. So we ended up deciding to go to Rag or Deweyville, um, which is. Five minutes, I believe, from Jake's house. I don't really – I'm not going to give his address or nothing, but it, it's just right up the road from his house. And Chris Ray, and he lives three minutes from me. Um, they're they're all great people, man. Very very welcoming people oh, yeah. um, versus versus how I, you know, started out. Um, I didn't like the hog dog world when I started out. So <laughs> – um, and, I mean, we get into that here in a little bit. But uh, Jake and uh, Miss Heather and – uh, Chris Ray, you know, th them guys, man, you, the lovely I people, what very is, open but... and very welcoming. They just uh -huh. make you feel like you're just friends with them. Like first time you meet them. I know the first time I ever met Chris Ray and Jake, both and Miss Heather, they were all just nice as can be. <laughs> and they, that's how they were every time I met them since. I felt bad. Cause I was talking shit to Chris Ray, man. He was talking to me about lab world. And of course that's where I come from. He was, and I'm sure he'll listen to this too, but he was, he was telling me what he bred, and I was like, Chris, you're an idiot, man. Well, come to find out, it was his wife that decided to do that. I felt so bad. I was like, God damn, here I am talking shit to people I don't even know. And, they're, you know, they're just doing it because that's what they want. <laughs> yeah. But I'm thinking, man, you don't have grand hunt retriever champions. You ain't got no nothing in the, in the pedigree. But I don't know that. I, I'm just saying, you know, that's what I'm thinking in my head. Um, but yeah, they, they are, they're all very welcoming, great, great, great people. Um, I, I mean, I don't have anything negative to say about them at all. You know, I, I can I text, uh, well, I'm sure. I'm Jake, just, I mean, I'm you can get I'm just, anytime. I'm just playing. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that damn Randy guy. <laughs> oh, I ain't really been able to get. Dude, he's got my dog. With Randy. Uh, he's got my damn so. dog and he keeps running. He keeps acting like it's his and, you know, and. <laughs> I don't know, man. We're going to have to work something out. Well, the problem was, was that Uncle Earl's, everybody kept getting us mixed up. They That's when they started calling me when 5-0 was running, like his last one or something. And I was, you know, they were giving me the buckle and whatever. They're like, Dandy, that's, Rand that's Randy. And, and I mean, I'm serious. Like, people were getting upset because they thought Randy was running in the sportsman class. And I was like, guys, oh, really? come on. We do not look that close. I'm serious. Wow. I'm sure Randy could tell you that whole story. Um, but it was an ongoing joke for a little bit. You know, I, I I never really got the chance to, you know, sit down and, you know, hang out with Randy or nothing. Yeah. But I don't have nothing negative to say about the guy. He's not a he's not a bad guy, you know. I'm sure he gets no, he's, bothered he's, a lot like y'all with Goose. No, he he's he's a good dude. And that's what I, I joke with everybody telling me he's Goose is my dog, and I just let Randy run him, you know. <laughs> and and honestly, this is this is funny because I was telling this woman one day she was talking about Goose. She's like, she said, "So so you own Goose?" And I looked, I was like, and Randy was sitting right there with Goose <laughs> in the back of his buggy. He said, "Yeah." He said, "Yeah." He's he's had him for a while now. He said, "But he said, but man, I just keep him and running some." Randy smiled, winked, drove off. 
I was like, look at this. That, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, he wouldn't, he did, he could have, could have made me look bad or something. But I explained to her, I was like, no, not really. I was like, you know, just, just cutting up. And she was like, oh, she's like, well, he fell right in there with it. I was like, yeah, I said, that's the kind of, <laughs> kind of guy he is. I haven't met anybody that I didn't like. There's, I'm, I'm sure there's quite a few of them that don't like me and, Hey, that's fine. But I, I haven't met anybody that I didn't like. One of my favorite people of all time is Johnny White. Yep. I, I, like, met, I, I didn't talk to him much, yeah, but I, I know who you're talking about. He, I try to be a good friend as much as I can because he's he does a lot of stuff on, on social media. You know, he's on there quite often, and I'm not. And so, I, I mean, every time I get on there, I try to make sure I go and, and like his comments, his pictures, his posts, and try to interact as much as possible. Yeah, he he was. Uh, got good I, dogs. I don't. Is it true that he used to be a male stripper? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was. I'm serious. Everybody kept throwing these rumors out there, and they're like, "Man, that's what I, he was." I'm gonna was go like, with it. I think he was a damn. He's a gigolo. <laughs> yeah. I, I think seen he was all the pictures. I seen all them pictures. Oh yeah, he was a he was he was a a man of the night. <laughs> he was a man of the <laughs> night, Johnny night. White. <laughs> He's a nice guy. He he really was. I mean, I just he's one. He's not around this area, so I, I mean, I honestly didn't get a chance to get a you know a a one on one experience with yeah. him. But. Like he drives down here all oh, the time. Shit. Yeah, he's yeah. from Maryland. Like yeah, he don't I, he I don't miss fucking in, Bay. All of his dogs and his whole compound is in Maryland. He don't miss fucking Bay. That's how Bay. serious he is. I mean, like he is <laughs> one hundred. I've God, never dude. met anybody more Dedicated serious. To it. Now, like there's, I know there's times where he looked at me and was like, I don't like that asshole, and and I understand. Yeah. And well, there's a lot of people that do that. But at the same time, I have ever since I first met him, you know, like I said, it kind of you got you kind of got after you've been around for a while, you got to you got to pay attention to him. Yeah. He's you know, just there. it's like he's there look at him. <laughs> and he's he's making he's making moves and they're, yeah. they're slow yeah. and steady, but they're steady if and they're on the upward rise. Like he's if he don't catch out, he's probably going to be yeah. perfect. More than likely than not. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Great <laughs> man, dogs. I I don't know that Sancho dog, man. I no offense to Goose, but my my favorite dog, to be honest, is yes. Sancho. Yeah, Sancho's I, I, pretty I'm, good. I'm gonna fire everyone up by saying this, and I don't care because I'm new, and I knew it by witnessing it. Hand grenade caught out in the one dog. Sancho should no have fans or butts. I, I no, oh, I'm talking about like I mean they're so hot like I mean him and Haywire. Yeah. Uh, they they're you talking about pagodas dogs right go to ranch that, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 I mean normally that like dogs are hot like I said I, they're some of my favorite dogs too I like haywire and uh, but they like I said they're I don't know that any are more consistent than what Randy's got you know the yeah. the hand grenade yeah, dog Randy's good. hand grenade well everybody talks about just goose but. No, Randy's got at, a whole oh. like you go back before Goose was ever there. Like I mean, he's he's got it's all all the dogs that he's had. You know, uh, I, yeah, I I, I do. I, I'm a fan of of cow when Cowboy's ear got ripped off. I don't know if yeah. y'all heard about that. Oh yeah, but um, me and Cody was the ones that was there uh patching his ear up. Yeah, I've uh, seen that. I've and, that and Cody's man. dad actually. Sorry, it was it was Cody's mm -hmm. dad. And we were holding a uh, pickling lime, and ben, I don't know if I can be saying all this stuff on here, but uh, that's how you know how we stopped bleeding. Yeah, is with the pickling lime and vinegar. Um, and we held it. You know, luckily Cowboy was able to run again. But man, Cowboy, you know, the dog is just awesome. And I don't know, man. I'm a dog lover. Cow you know, I really Cowboy am. is and, just and, steady as a rock, son. He's he's. I think he's getting up there in age, though. Oh, he's um, he's been there. For a long time. Yeah. But like, I mean, as far as like steady, like he's just steady as a rock. He yeah. He's not going to go out there and do more than he has to, you know, that he just, he does what he needs to. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. I've watched him for a lot of years and I mean, a long time. And that son of a bitch has won a lot of money. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I don't, it. I I don't do. know if there's only been what, maybe one more that's won more than him or see he'd be winning this. Who, Cowboy. Cowboy, yeah, yeah. I think he's has the most places out of any dog ever. He's got. If he's not, he's number two. Yeah, Dang. I know he's for sure is the king of two dog. Shit, yeah. I've been letting that, Randy yeah. run him a while too. <laughs> Randy's going to tighten up. 
Now he's got all these new dogs. Or these young dogs coming fan up. Fanboy or fanboy put on uh, a show. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Goose, Goose, if Randy, ever, and look, all I'm gonna talk shit. But me and Pat were sitting there, and when fanboy come out, it was him and Goose running. I said, "Oh Lord and mercy, look at that son of a gun there." <laughs> Pat, me and Pat looked at each other and said, "I think that's gonna be the one." He said, "Yep," and it was. And I mean, I could have left yeah. it. Nine o'clock that night, ten o'clock, and came on back home. We didn't even take a dog to run. I was like, I'm gonna stay and watch Fanboy win this. And actually, I wound up going to sleep at like three o'clock. But he he still won. I actually got yep. first and second. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, doing pretty good, doing pretty good. But those those yep. guys, those guys in that, and and women in the in the bay pen stuff. Like I said, it's. When I was I was told a lot of horror stories at first, blah blah blah, but I hadn't seen much of none of that stuff. There, there's a lot of that goes back to just jealousy, and yeah, you know, there's you got certain people that don't want to go to those bays because the entry fees are expensive. But I mean, yeah. when you win, you win a lot. Like uh-huh. if, exactly, you know, like we we went to the Abbeville Bay, great bay had a great time, great atmosphere. And we wound up baying off for first and second. We got second. And I think we got 1500 bucks in a two dog. Dang. Yeah. Now well, if that, yeah, that'd have been 15,000. Yeah. At the other ones. You know what I mean? Yep. Some of those. Exactly. And, and then, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that because the entry fees weren't much. It kept it more fun. It yeah, wasn't. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't so strict on competition, but if we're competing with all these high level dogs, you got to have something worth competing for. So the exactly. stakes have to be higher. Mm-hmm. And I'm fine. Yeah, with just it. like the, the the coon dog world. I mean, gosh yeah. dang, hundred thousand dollars. I I just listened to that podcast from y'all. Uh, I oh, was yeah. like, goodness. Um, and that you were you you nailed it right on the head when you said. Uh, you know, if Goose was in that world, he would have won millions. Millions. You know, and and that that's that's very accurate. But slowly, this it's just a lot of people look down on, you know, liberals and stuff like that. Look down upon uh, the hog, the bay pen world because they they believe you know it's it's abuse or whatever the case may be. A lot of it's our but, own, we're our own worst enemy. You get out there and they start like you said. There's a lot of partying and carrying on. That's great. But if you have an outsider that comes in there and they don't know, and other people aren't conducting themselves in a civil manner, then yeah. that's that's the look that you give. Yep, yep, yep. And exactly. so, I mean, it's it's tough. You got people yeah, that's I, complaining about it, but at the same time, they're the ones doing it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, versus other worlds, that the, the bay pen world is very welcoming. I mean, it oh is, yeah, it, without everybody's a doubt. friendly there. Um, it, it just blew my mind. It, it really mm-hmm. did. I mean, it was, it was, I figured, you know, there'd be fights and, and I'm sure there is every once in a while, but man, it, it was, happened. it was awesome. We'll be back after a quick break. And now thanks to the sponsors and friends of Dixie Doggers. Animal housing solutions. Boars and broads. Crockett Taxidermy. Hardcore Hog Dogs. Southern Cross Cut Gear. Ada Y Transport. 4L Kennels. The American Doghorn Museum. Unique Hounding Hunting Supply. Hogbang.com. Tusker's Magazine. Mud Creek Hog Dog Trials. Yeah, it's like I said, it's to me, it's one of those deals. But I'm just like, and you, you got guys like Jake who are really, you know, they're putting forth the effort. He's got a whole team there that works hard, and they keep it to where you don't see any damage done. Uh, things can happen, yeah, you know, but it's not exploited. And yep, exactly. You know, it's ran in a in a good fashion. Or like I said, but outside of the the arena part, Jake really can't control what everybody else is doing. 
Exactly. You know, so exactly. that that's that's what I was getting at a while ago. There, you got these few people, and they 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 piss and moan a lot of times, and they know who they are, and then they'll be the main ones causing issues. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's one of those like, like it's we're our own worst enemy. Yeah, and, and like you said yeah. earlier, you get some of them get a bad rap. You you get a bad rap because Billy Bob and his three cousins went and snatched somebody's gate off the hinges and, and poached their property because that's what, <laughs> yeah. that's what they think hog hunters are doing. Yeah. So you got one, one group that messing it up for all of us yeah. or, or can, you know, yeah. so, but, exactly. so how, how did you get into the dog stuff period? Like I said, you said that you were, um, you weren't from a, a, a hunting background. You're, you're nope, nope. actually a foster child. Yep, yep. Originally, from so go, go into I, that. So, yeah, I I, uh, I went and got, you know, taken out of home, whatever. Um, went and lived with an aunt when I was about seven, and then officially, uh, I'm not going to get into all those details, went into foster care around uh, sixth grade. Um, you know, and, and I was never around even, you know, I came back and seen my biological family, you know, my, my mother and stuff ended up getting her stuff together. I joined the army, um, when I was 17, um, actually the national guard, um, I joined that and because that was the, the earliest you could join. So I ended up, you know, meet my squad leader and he was a bomb dog handler. This goes into uh, me getting into the, the actual dog world. Um, he was a bomb dog handler and, uh, he was, he was telling me, you know, how the, you know, labs are, I, I don't want to say incorrect numbers. So please don't want to hold this, um, number true, but you know, there was, there's was labs, a certain amount going in for suicide missions a month, you know, trying to make sure everybody was safe to come through his name's, uh, Sergeant Gunlack. You can look him up on, uh, uh, Google. I, I can't remember exactly where he's from, but he ended up getting his dog back, whatever. So I told myself, you know, I'm going to take every lab I can. I got into the lab world. Um, I trained labs. Uh, there was nothing really that struck me on it other than, you know, I said I wanted labs. Well, I did help a guy for a while in the state of Kansas, um, and he was running hunt tests, and he'd always, you know, say, man, you're, you're never going to make it. You never make it in a hunt test. Just keep helping me. And I was doing all the hard work in the <laughs> lab world, you know, which is force fetch, uh, force to pile, just, just – there's a million other things that come into the basic obedience, just very simple stuff that I was, you know, I was the bitch and I was always so scared to move forward with that. Well, um, you know, eight, seven, six years later, actually, I, I, you know, moved out to Louisiana. I uh, met my wife, of course, and, uh, I told her I'm never going to own a lab again because my other lab, I don't know how, but just fell over dead. You know, we took them. She, to the vet they said he got into antifreeze whatever um so i told her i'd never own another one she got me one i ended up training her i said man i really want to try a hunt test so i ran a hunt test and i passed i was like wow you know i was always told i wouldn't pass these so i, I don't want to get big into the duck world because i know most of the listeners don't care about that side even though i do have a few guys that are from the duck world listening but um i i decided you know i I wanted to take on client dogs. So I took on client dogs and I got into the competitive world, you know, traveling from Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, just everywhere, um, with the labs. And, um, you know, it was, it was, I was doing pretty decent. I would say, you know, I had a lot of, um, a lot of recommendations out there and, um, people would tell other people about me, you know, word of mouth was great. Well, I, like I said, I got into the, hunt test world with client dogs and i was i was doing started dogs in about two weeks well my clients were posting it and um you know other trainers and other individuals that's that's impossible there's no way you can do it that quick whatever and i so i quit with the whole social media posting uh dogs the whole nine yards um but it kind of struck my attention in the lab world that everybody is looking for not everybody, sorry. Majority of people are looking for a way to, um, you know, degrade your, your work and the hard effort you put into it. Um, instead of, you know, praising you, man, your dog looks great, you know, because then when you have a litter, they're going to sell. But 
that that's the lab world. That's how I kind of got into that. And um, I, I did when I was younger. I went with a buddy coon hunting. Um, we ran coon dogs, and his dad, you know, they had a bunch of little rat. I, I want to say rat terriers. I, I'm not quite sure. And then mm-hmm. bull terriers, I know for sure that they ran. And he took me by the gate, and they had 30, 40 coon dogs. And they're like, we're taking them all. I'm like, okay. So we run out there. You know, we're walking. We're walk hunting. No casting, none of that. We're walking. They're pulling them out of holes, off, you know, treeing them, whatever. And it's in the middle of winter. And in Kansas winter, anybody can argue it's way colder up there than it is down here in the south. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a, a dog that got left behind uh, across the river. And, uh, you know, someone said, hey, you know, just leave it. He, he's not going to make it. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. You know, and this, I don't want to get into coaling and all this other stuff with this topic. But I said, man, I can't do it. I can't watch this happen. You know, and that guy's like, man, you're going to be a dog guy. You know, and I was like, oh, you know, I appreciate it, whatever. So that was the one experience I had really running dogs. Well, then I was on uh, the Sabine River. Like I said earlier, I'm not going to name any names. And this gets into the hog dog world. I uh, I met a guy and he had he had his dogs rigged up in a boat. And I was like, man, you know, I want to do that. Everybody's sitting up there. It's dangerous, man. You, you, you can't do it by yourself. You got to have someone to do it. And and I want all the uh, the new guys that, you know, that have been hunting with me and been asking these questions to listen to this part because I really haven't, you know, explained it to them much or told them about this. Um, but I, I talked to him, talked to him. He said, man, you buy everything, you get your dogs, you know, give me a call, we'll go run dogs. And now I know, you know, probably why he didn't want to, but um, it, it, that's besides the point promised me the whole world so i went and spent as everybody on this podcast knows how expensive you know the garment equipment is the the vests the dogs you know the whole nine yards i i did it all i bought everything um and i had all these dogs rigged up and i sent him a picture he goes yeah man just meet me friday at eight o'clock okay you know sounds good um and i went there and I was there like 7.30. You know, I'm texting him, texting him, no answer, no answer. And he sends me a video of him catching a pig already. Man, I'm going home today. I, I, I'm I'm done. I already caught my pig. I'm out. I'm like, what the heck? So I didn't know. And, you know, everybody's in my ear. Don't go hunt by yourself. So I just loaded my dogs back up once again, you know, and he said, I'll meet up with you next Friday. So I waited another week. And here I am, you know, thousands of dollars in. And I'm taking time off work, you know, from – to be able to go do this and uh i took off again get there in the morning and i text him he's like yeah man i already went wednesday i, I decided not to go today and i was like well what the heck you know it, he, he didn't want to um which is fine no big deal well um there's there's a guy that i met he's not on social media um you, nobody would probably even know him uh, I was driving by and I had all my dogs in the bed of the truck. And this was, was the positive impact side driving by, I had all the dogs in the bed of my truck. You know, I was going to go drop on a, we have an 8,000 acre lease and I was going to go drop my dogs, but we went by the boat launch, uh, old boy sitting there. And I said, Hey man, you know, can I hunt with you? And I didn't, I, by the way, I didn't know the hog dog world. People don't want other people bringing dogs. You know, I've listened to the podcast, but I didn't know none of this. That's why I'm telling all these new guys to listen to y'all's podcast, but we'll, we'll get into that part here in a little bit as well. But, um, I, I told him, I said, man, you know, I really want to hunt with y'all. You, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. If not, he goes, man, I only got, you got a catch dog. I was like, yeah, he's like, go ahead and bring him. So I said, okay, went and loaded all my dogs up every single one of them at this time. I think I had like eight or nine hog dogs, not a lick of experience, probably never seen a pig a day in their life. This guy who's, who's a very, I would consider a very well hog hunter, um, allowed me to go with him. He didn't care. We got on a, on a good boar hog was our first one. Um, it was 270 and I'm glad I went with someone like that, that had the experience and the knowledge and to help me, because if it was just my wife and I, um, I'm not saying I'm like, uh, you know, scared of it or nothing, but I, I mean, I wouldn't have known the process going in there, you know, walking the catch dog to the, to the bay, the whole nine yards well you know we caught the pig um and after that you know tied him up and i've been hunting with that guy ever since um he, he's a great 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 guy uh he's he's taught me a lot um he's the one who introduced me to the dale lee tapes and uh um of course mike Colley's um 
plots uh, by you Cajun, and then he's the one who actually told me to listen to podcasts, and that's how I found y'all. And I started listening to all y'all's podcasts. But yeah, that's that's I know I kind of rambled on no, a little that's bit, fine. but that's, that's how about. I got into that. I mean, you're 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 the guest. People want to hear what you got to say. Yes, sir. Because yes, if I want to talk, I'm just going to interrupt you anyway. That's what I do. That's <laughs> what I do to everybody. I mean, shit. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that that's mainly how I got into uh to the hog dog world. Of course, it gets more into into detail about you know meeting up with Cody and Uncle Earl's and you know stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it all all goes like in that hand all kind in of hand. fell into place. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah exactly. that's cool. Yeah, because like I said, I was just you know went, started on the bait pen stuff. We just kind of went with that. But I mean, yeah. like I said, we had uh, I was. I just the whole thing about somebody telling you to meet them and then you being there on time or early and then them not being there. Okay. I could, I could get it. If something happened, they weren't able to make it. And they, they text and say, Hey man, you know, I had a flat tire or, or the transmission burn up or hell I overslept, whatever. Yeah. But then exactly. they send you a video of a hog and say, well, we already went. Yeah. And so you Trust got there at the time the they got you got there at the time that they that they asked you to be there, right? Before that, I was there at seven thirty, just in case, like you know, unloading boats and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that is uh, that's about as shitty as you can get. I don't know who they are, but that's not cool at all. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure with you getting getting all your equipment and getting your stuff together. I mean, getting your equipment and stuff that, you know, that's how you got, you talked to Cody, mm -hmm. uh, getting dogs. So, yeah. Social, social um, media. I <laughs> so, so that was a topic that we, we had talked about that we were going to discuss. Yeah. So I didn't know that. I, I don't know what any of these are until we start the podcast, you know, five minutes beforehand. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, let, let's get I, into that right there. Uh, on on getting dogs where you got your dog your first dogs from and how, how the process went with that yeah so um i i sent this actually it's funny because i put it in parentheses to nate and i said this is a big topic um this is another one well i mean majority of this is for the new guys uh, i do want to make that that known i'm not saying i know everything but i figure talking to y'all would help people um get some more knowledge but um I started out I, with uh, one of Cody's buddies. He he sold me a Kerr and Plot mix and uh, and a Bulldog Kerr mix. Um, no, nothing wrong with them. They they bay. Uh, it, it, that wasn't the problem um, by any means. Not that social media experience. Um, it, it actually put, put me in all this um, in in all this world. But uh, I started out with them too. I went out to the woods, you know, they were going maybe a hundred yards and I was the happiest man in the world. I'm not kidding you. I was watching that garment. Nobody else with me that knew. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know what I was doing hunting wise. My dogs go out a hundred yards. I'm jumping on the bank, just happy as hell. Um, but I didn't know any better. So, uh, you can't really do research on how to train a dog on, on YouTube or anything, uh, like a fresh, hog dog with no experience at yeah. all like you can't really research that that's what the purpose of this is um so i, I did that and it was just a disaster um, with those two dogs uh didn't work out so um i like i said i was hunting with that guy um and he has a nine-year-old cur dog she's completely finished and i gotta give him kudos to this completely finished and this will go into the subject of the big pig that i sent a picture to nate of um but one night we went to try to get that pig and she baited it whatever and we'll get into that scenario here in a little bit um because there's a lot of questions in that she came back he said i'm done with her he said if you don't put her in the truck i'm done with her and he raised her since she was six weeks old okay. so this dog's not a natural bobtail but she is a bobtail she's had her achilles tendon cut every single pig to this day that i have caught has been over that dog um, she's phenomenal. He, he just gave her to me for free. But in the meantime, here I am on social media, searching Facebook posts after Facebook, man, I got this available. I got this, I got this. And, um, you know, I ended up buying a bloodhound, which I know y'all can laugh at me, whatever. I bought a bloodhound because oh, no. I did research on their nose. They can track up to a 12 day old trail. So I bought a bloodhound. Well, that was a 
big mistake. I always wanted to plot, but Mike Colley was backed up, or not backed up, whatever the case may be. He didn't have any available at the time. So I started buying all these other dogs. I ended up buying, um, like I said, the Bloodhound, uh, and then just a bunch of, like, Kerr mixes when I was at Uncle Earl's. Yeah, just fresh just, money, Facebook son. Yeah, you had them jumping. It, they was making posts on other groups that, "Hey, look at this guy. Get on there and tell him about that cur dog that you picked up yesterday at the garbage pound." Yep. See, I got and, I, and the I kind of dogs I got too. Don't feel bad. I got them. I mean, I was buying them left and right. I was, and then like I, my buddy's dog, the the one. Well, that's my dog now, Mama Dog. She she would get these dogs started, and then I was like, man. Now I got um, a couple July mixes, and of course, Remy brought me the famous Uncle Pat mix. The feral um, ankle biters. <laughs> the ones that eat you while you're trying to feed them. The weed eaters uh, train dogs. The, yeah, they're, they're a million mile an hour, but uh, they're still kind of pups. Um, but I, the, that mama dog was training these other ones and kind of getting them going, and now I got, you know, a July. I got also got a good an all right dog from chris ray nothing negative for the price it was definitely worth it um and i'm getting into some more speed with the with the july mixes and of course i got the plot hound um through my collie which i'm using for more of a bottom i i I hunt my curs when i hunt my curs and then i hunt my hounds with my hounds depending on which pigs on camera and whether it's got its nikes on or not running out of the way um you know I, i i just i switch it up a little bit but um that the, the plot is eight months old. You know, I'm dealing with uh, quite a few puppies, but I did end up one of my labs, one of my finished labs, I traded, and this guy was really nice. I traded one of my finished labs for two finished cur dogs. Hmm. And when I got them, you could tell they were, they were hog dog. They were cut from, I mean, they're cut everywhere. Um, and, and they're working out pretty well for me. Um, it, it's, I don't have, one, I'm going to say this is what you should hunt because I don't know. I have no idea. I'm still learning. But that's the, that's the why there's not a the YouTube video to, to train these dogs. That that's why. Because there's so many different ways, and so many different dogs, and so many different styles. As I, soon, I don't know. As soon as you're like, man, I really know how to yeah. get dogs. Go get some different dogs. Yes. Go get something mm-hmm. new. And something that's going to drive a, you crazy. Go get a mixed breed. Yeah, you gotta you gotta have something to keep it chopped up all the time. Um, that that like, but I'm I'm with you. I'm with you 100 percent on that. So yeah, you got the cur dogs. They're hog dogs. Oh yeah, they're so now, finished. Now you I'm, now I'm you're in the game. Hogs. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. So you steadily you're, you're steady on catching hogs. Yes, sir. Yeah, about like this today. I went out again uh, about a few hours before the podcast, and I had a. I took out the puppies with those finished cur dogs and I bayed one. And I mean, I didn't, I didn't tie them and keep them or nothing, but I just wanted my dogs to bay yeah, that's, and, and, you know, let them talk to them for a little bit. I, like I said, I, I'm still new, so I'm not necessarily hundred percent sure on what I'm doing, but that seemed to be the best way if, for my pups to start getting out there. If, uh, if you turn the dogs loose and they find a hog and they're baying the hog and they didn't get killed they didn't they're not 17 miles on another property you didn't have to trespass and all that uh, yeah then you're doing all right with the pup stuff but you're not a hog hunter yet you got to get into trespassing <laughs> and and tearing shit up and all that it gets worse but what i'm saying is so apparently you're doing something right because i've got dogs and i've been doing this a long time i got dogs that are not puppies and they still don't want to find a hog they still don't want to bay a damn hog so you're, you're you're ahead of the game. I, I'm trying. So I mean, I, I really am. So keep rolling with it. So, you know, when you were talking about not being able to find uh, something on YouTube, you said you were listening to us. Yeah. And the, so, the information we try to put out there that's 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 why we we do this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So a a big man, a, a huge huge shout out to Uncle Pat. Um, he y'all bringing him on is awesome but y'all's podcast i'm not going to talk about any other ones i'm not going to you know down them but this one is just phenomenal i mean it is it's so informational and and the new guys and i um you know i i I tell anybody that wants to hunt with me i don't care you know unless you're under 16 you have to get your parents permission whatever 
I don't care how old you are. If you're fresh to it, if you ain't got dogs, if you got dogs, call me. You can hunt with me. And those guys know when you're hunting with me that, and I, like, I'm not the best, but we listen to Dixie Dogger's podcast, like, the whole time. My wife and I driving, we listen to Dixie Dogger's podcast. Four months ago is when I found out about this. Uh, it was around Uncle Earl's time. And I've sat down since then, and I, I know y'all have 95. This will be, like, the 96th episode. Yep. Um, I, I can sit I, here I and, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I listen to, I've listened to every single one at least once, if not twice. And I, I listen to them over and over and constantly, and especially the very informational ones. Um, when y'all started out, you, um, with the how to train, or so it was a puppy one, uh, or how new new hog daughters or something like that. I'm yeah. um, starting out with new dogs, and, and if you're new to the sport, I mean, y'all nailed it. Y'all nailed it. Not normal adventures as well. He does all right on one of his, you know, training puppies. But I, I'm not saying anything bad about him. I think he's a great guy. It's just it's not as informational as every one of y'all's podcast put together. And bringing Uncle Pat on here, it is great. I wish more people like myself that are new to it would would not necessarily come on y'all's podcast like this. I'm not saying that, but call in, talk to Uncle Pat, ask mm-hmm. y'all questions. Y'all are very knowledgeable, yes. and, and this podcast Much is amazing. It, it, it's it's got to be going. Um, a long ways with how how good y'all are doing um i I mean i love it i i have nothing negative to say about it i've listened to it like i said at least once if not twice on every single episode and uh i've learned a lot i could go into details all day long about everything i've learned i've learned stuff from jen that's a female or something y'all talk to then she hunts i learned from uncle pat um a little bit from jake I've listened to a little bit of, you know, Randy. I mean, I've listened to them all, but I'm saying what I what I learned, yeah. and I'm picking up from these people you talk. But you and Nate, man, y'all, we, y- y'all don't get enough credit for sitting down and taking the time to talk to them and, and giving everybody the information you do. The the oh, thank the, you. We really we appreciate, appreciate that. It's for very real. humbling. Well, and I mean, it is much appreciated, and that's the goal of the podcast. Yeah, it's like I'm. Like I, like I was saying a while ago, there's a lot of people. I know they don't care they, or, or care for me or like me or whatever. I, I'm, I guess I'm just different. I mean, I'm, I try to be nice. I try to support everything. Uh, we try to be involved as much as possible. But I am not going to run over here and beg you for a dog. Or I, I, And I have people that and sometimes it's hard to turn a dog down. But I, I've had people contact me. It was like, hey, man, I got a couple of pups. I'm like, can we send you something? Yeah. And then after that, they're like, uh, Hey, you, you can send me a, uh, you know, a thousand bucks. They're only 500 a piece. I'm like, bro, I don't <laughs> mind paying for a dog. I don't, but I turn down. I'm talking about some real good stuff all the time that I don't, I don't, you know, that's not how it works, mm-hmm. you know? And like you were talking about that man gave you a dog. Yeah. I did. do. Yeah. I do, I do the same thing. That's what we're supposed to do. But a lot of these other guys, they're not doing that shit. They're all they're doing is bitching and moaning. Well, y'all guys are on a podcast. You ain't got y'all ain't got time to really be hunting. I promise you. <laughs> I promise you. Bring your ass with me and let's go. I guarantee you, if they're out there running their mouth, I'm on here running my mouth. But and all of them want to talk shit constantly. And it's not the younger guys. It's not the ones that's wanting to learn. And that's how I know it's working. Just like mm-hmm. you just got through saying, you listen to it. And you can tell me how many episodes we have. I have. I honestly, I don't know. I don't. Nathan knows. I don't. I, I'm, yeah. I'm hunting. I'm messing with dogs. I'm building dog boxes. I'm redoing this. I'm fixing this. I'm messing with a Joey pup. Wright's job is to be Joey Wright. That's that's I don't what want I do. Him to do. Nothing else. <laughs> but, I just want him to be him. But I've got yeah. The scenario that you just done, like what you just went through. That's that's every day now. Literally, almost every day, somebody calls and says, "Hey, man." I really want to appreciate, you know, want to let you know how much we appreciate what you guys are doing because my pup got sick and I went back to episode 30 something or what, you know, I don't even know mm-hmm. the number, just saying this is, and, and it saved my pup. I've had people call yeah. me at three o'clock in the morning or message me on Messenger or the business suite and be like, hey, man, I wish I could talk to you. I, you know, I need somebody to talk to about this or whatever. And the same thing for Uncle Pat. He and showed us I get messages. up 
and I get up and I make that phone call. If you don't, I, you can, I can put names out there right now. I guarantee you, that, and they'll speak up right now and say, yeah, Joey has called me at 3.30 in the morning because I was in the bind and didn't know what to do in the middle of the marsh or middle of the woods or the middle of the mountains. Mm-hmm. Or because yeah, yeah. they just needed to talk for a minute. There was a few instances like that where somebody just needed to talk. And they have shit to yeah. do with hunting. <clears throat> so the naysayers out there that that are against it, and 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 I don't think that they're actually against it. I think they just it's I think at times they feel left out. Yes, they feel left out. What and we're it's trying not. to do is build a community. We're supposed to be in mm-hmm. this together. We're on the same team. We're supposed to be helping each other. Yeah. Even well, I mean, somebody I don't spits get on, in your face, wipe it off. Look at Pat. Pat does more. Pat. Pat does more for us than I do for as far as advertising. Oh yes. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'll share our post, and, and that's like, it's, and people say, "Well, you get what you put in." I put in a lot. Like I don't really do a whole lot on the social media scale of it, but like I'm constantly constantly doing stuff and a lot of these older guys that i know and that i that i've met through doing this and that we hunt together from time to time they'll tell you man i like a lot of times i I don't even get to answer the phone because i'm talking to younger guys people who are just starting and those Mm -hmm. the, the the guys i surround myself with now that's what they do as well and i'll be honest with you if they don't do that i have no desire to be around and if you're yeah, a naysayer yeah. and you don't agree with what we're doing, turn the channel. This is our. You don't have to listen to this. This is our heritage. We we're trying to preserve this it is, and keep it and grow it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, F- it's funny about that. We uh we you know how everybody when when dogs start barking like shut up shut up shut up. But when it's a good part on Dixie dog, it's like shut up shut up listen listen because it's about <laughs> to be something very informational. And they're like dogs are barking 800 yards. We're like. And tell their tree, shut up, listen, you know, got an open dog or something. But yeah, I mean, it, yeah, and, and, it's very informational. Well, that's, and, and that's what we've had quite a few. They, they want me to do, or just me and Nate to do some more, just us, just straight information. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we're, we're, we're going to incorporate some of that as well. And what we're trying to do now is basically trying to catalog all these people to have a trace of history. Yeah. You know, yeah. like we, we've got some bigger name people that are lined up already. Uh, when I say bigger name people, like they, they're way more advanced than what, what I am. They've been yeah, here yeah. for years and years and years and years. I mean, like they're, they're some of the, they're the reasons Mike Colley has plot. They're the reason plots are here. People like that's yeah. what I'm saying. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a reason Kimmers are here. Those are the the kind of people that we're, we're going to be talking to, and we have lined up. So it's it's basically we're we're trying to keep all this stuff on record to have a record of what. Hey, the Dale Lee tapes, I love them. You listen oh, to yeah. them. How many people listen to them? Well, guess what? If there wasn't no motherfucker out there that was recording them, how would you listen to them? Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So that's, now that, I like that point right there. That's well, a very good statement. So that's what we're doing here. If, if oh, you yeah. don't agree with it, I'm sorry. And, and look, you could oh, be yeah. right in your world. I've gotten shit for taking footage and photos of stuff, been told it was gay, <laughs> like all kinds of stuff. And it'd be like, <laughs> what are you like? Well, when you're sitting there and you're like, man, my old dog, this and that. Well, I don't have to think about it. I can pull up this these videos after video after video and photo after photo. Mm-hmm. And it's not a grainy photo. It's like, I'm sitting there looking at that animal again. And that's been very rewarding. Like for example, like with midnight mm-hmm. been filming her so much the past couple of years and putting together that memorial video. I cried, I cried a lot. I'm not gonna lie. I about every five minutes. Well, I had to take a break. It's a record, but you it was between happiness and sadness. But I was just so glad to have it. Cause there was something there to say. I know nobody's going to forget mm-hmm. midnight. What you got? Yeah. There, there's so many podcasts going on mm-hmm. and you're not wrong. There, there's, and, and there's two or three new ones every day. Yeah. And a lot of them are yeah. really good. Yeah. That, but they're, like I said, I've, I've tried to listen to some of them. They're just not my cut. Like I, they're more Q and a or they they're uh-huh. dry, but, and that's great because 
they're doing something different than what I'm doing and and what we do. And, and I, I'm me. I, I'm going to be me, and that's that's just all I can do. I can't yeah, put yeah. on this fucked up facade. And believe you me, I've tried. You know, it's like I I, I just can't do it. Like I mean, that Kyle Tolbert blood tracking guy he hunted with us been talking with him for two years i didn't even know kyle was a preacher (laughs) ain't no telling what this man has heard i said well excuse me preacher but holy shit brother don coggins he knows me for who i am Uh i'm not going i try and i do try to be respectful and watch my mouth you know what i'm saying i don't get i try not to get out of hand around him because that's just who i am but there are times where he's i've been cussing and raising hell and he just kind of laughs and he's like okay you know and that's that's how i am and i wish other people would be like that don't get on on, on youtube or uh, facebook live or anything like that and try to be something that you're not if you're not mm-hmm. funny then you're not funny if you're not <laughs> overzealous and loud and boisterous like some arrogant asshole like me well then that's you're why not I'm <laughs> well, I'm just saying, if you're not, then just don't be that. You don't have to be yeah. that. So stop fucking yep. pretending. Just be yourself. But but don't get don't be dogging on me because I'm I'm who I am and I'm yeah. comfortable with it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I exactly. I, I'm fine to be how I am, and I know I'm messed up to a lot of people. But hey, you like it or love it? That's the only options you got. You can't <laughs> hate it. Eventually, you're gonna like it or love it. I promise you. Except for couple of people they, they're gonna hate it, <laughs> they're gonna hate it. <laughs> but i mean we, we we get some good feedback on it though so and having guys like yourself who are new to it but are dead that are 100 percent ingrained in it and committed that's and what that's what we got to have to keep it going yes mm-hmm. yeah 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 you exactly know? and so when you got you when you got guys out there that are taking advantage of of guys like yourself who are needing a good dog and, and and we'll say, man, I'm gonna say this this dog, it's it's a good dog. I'm gonna sell it to you for two thousand dollars. Knowing good and well that yeah. dog ain't worth the shit. Why would you do yep. that? Because you need two thousand dollars. What they could do is call mm-hmm. you and say, Hey man, I need to borrow two thousand dollars. Instead of trying exactly. to just fuck you over out of a dog because yeah, the dog yeah. don't and deserve I, I mean, it. Yeah, trust me, I, I'm I'm aware. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. But you had 100%. to learn the hard way. That's what sucks. And I and I did. I did. And I started, like, even with even with Chris Ray, man, like, I I know him from the Bay Pen. He lives right down the road from me. And I'm not I'm, I'm not saying this negatively about him, but I second guess. I was like, why the hell is he getting rid of the dog, man? You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, and that shouldn't be every hog. Ho- I'm sorry. The lab world is a million times better than the hog dog world in that because we have – titles on our dogs you know mm-hmm. so you can't lie you can't go oh i got a finished dog well your dog's not finished because they you know what i mean so yep. in the hog dog world it's not that easy you know i had a guy in uh oh shit east louisiana way east swore up and down man my dogs are the best they've won everything in the bay pens from here to here to here bring me a thousand dollars you can have so and so luckily i knew cody at the time a thousand. cody goes yeah, the coat. Well, Cody knew the guy, and Cody yeah. goes, "Man, and I'm not going to say the guy's name because I know he's known, but he is not an Uncle Earl's type of bay pen dog. Yeah, he's one of them little tiny. I could take my freaking woods dog yeah, right backyard now and, and and win the shit, you know. And yeah. and I'm like, I almost fell for it. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not made of money, but I was about to say, well, shit, I can invest in a thousand dollars, you know, because he's swearing you'll win all this money. No way in hell them dogs are competing with goose or, or cowboy hand grenade, um, you know, the whole nine yards. Yep. Or else they would be there. And I didn't see that guy there, and I didn't see any of his damn dogs there. That, so that, I knew. That's right. There's your answer. Well, the, and, and here's the thing. 20 years ago, $1,000 was, to me, I was, you know, 1000 bucks was a lot of money. But at the same time, it wasn't shit to buy a dog for 1000 bucks. Like, I mean, that's just whatever a that's good one. a good dog's a thousand dollars well i'm telling you right fucking now you're not getting nothing for a thousand bucks from me uh-uh i no, promise you that i'll give you i'll give you that dog for free before i'll sell yeah. it for nothing yeah them, them cur dogs 
that uh, them cur dogs are not luckily i have these younger ones for the speed like i was saying but i'm gonna be honest with you and i i know he's listening him and i have already had this talk i know what my my lab was worth because of the titles and the papers and all that uh, honestly his cur dogs were not worth that they're older they do not have the speed they used to yeah so uh, all they're doing is honestly i'm not even lying to you i'm not talking bad about the guy great guy but all they're doing is finding the pig. They can. They are way too damn slow now to be stopping the pig. I got my younger ones that are that I'm trying to work with to get out there and actually nip the pig on the ass and spin it around and you know yeah. get it to sit down. And you have to have a quick dog for that shit. And them older dogs ain't making it. And he wanted to sell each one one for twenty five hundred dollars a piece. And I was I almost bit that until he told me, man, I need a I really need a, a lab. I was like, well, shit, perfect. You know, I got one of my own that I, that's what I did. You know, I train him up yeah. him, and he, he gave me the whole word. He's like, man, you, you undersold your dog. Your dog is way better. And that's how I am on social media, yeah. you know? So it, it's, well, oh man, it's a rough world out there for that. And like I put it, this first ones I've sold in a long time and get some guys that listen to us and I've talked to them. And and the main reason I done it is because, like I said, I've got the same stock and all this, the same dog, same bloodlines. Mm-hmm. I wound up getting these from a guy that I hunted with. Got the whole got the whole pack. You know what I mean? So it's like I I don't need all these dogs, but at the same time, I'm not just going to hand them over. Say hey, here yeah. you go, just to anybody, because I know what they are. They, these yeah. are fin- these are these are more of a finished running catch dog. They're four years old. They're in their prime. You know what I mean? They, they, I mean these yeah. dogs here, and they're not all beat up. They're not cut up bad. All that shit. Be- First off, he run them with a larger. There, it was a big pack that he runs together, so they mm-hmm. don't have to take a lot of damage individually. So, I, so dogs like that to me. You know they they're going to be worth a little more than you got a you got another one over here that's four years old and he had to do it by himself all the time. He might be a better dog for a little while, but yeah, like you said, age takes over. Mm-hmm. Then they it slow does. down, whether it's a year or two years. When you have another one that's in better shape and is healthier, it's going to last longer. So you get your money's worth. And, yeah, and what you're yeah. talking about, having dogs that are slower, yeah, they can get get your pup started. But hell, you already had that old nine year old dog that could do that. And she's freaking awesome. That is my she's she's my baby. I'll you, put it that way. Well, you get you get those pups. You show them a couple of times. You mm-hmm. know, let them know what a hog is. Then after that, like, just let the pups go. Keep all the rest of them at home. That's now that oh, you yeah. ain't got to do that. I'm just saying that's 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 our our deal. Actually, some of them, like, we don't even ever put them with an older dog at all. It's like, hey, you just going to have to figure it out. And it is yeah, frustrating yeah, yeah. as shit. I couldn't have done that yeah. when I first started. Ain't no way. See, I, that's, yeah. yeah <laughs> so you're, you're still at the new stage. You, you I don't uh-huh. know if you can do that. Yeah, that, no, I'm not. That's I asking mean, too much. Uncle Pat's dogs, I mean, they're already, they're already banging. And I got a couple Heinz 57s that my in-laws, you know, just had running around the house that I'm trying to get going. But Uncle Pat's dogs, I mean – Oh shit, man! They're trying bears? to catch. We got a yeah, oh yeah, we got a bar hog. Uh, we're allowed to have pigs here, of course, but uh, yeah. they're, they're banging the shit out of them bar hogs. I mean, how old are? And, and uh, like I said, Uncle Pat would know better, but I it's got, it's the litter he gave to Remy. Uh, I'm I'm assuming four months, five months ish. Text Pat, see what is how old that litter we got from Remy. Yeah, like. tell tell him it would be like the July. Um, it's the it's tell the, the call. litter. It's yeah, it's a uh, um, shit. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, I wish I knew exactly how old they were. Well, I, I mean that's, but anyway, though, I mean that that's the kind of dogs you want. Like I said, and, and you don't have to pay no damn twenty five hundred dollars or three thousand. Uh-huh. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. I promise you, because I'll I'll if a dog's worth it, I'll get it in a minute. But yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. hard to find one. And, and those dogs I was talking about moving, I call, I told those guys, I was like, look, I will drive to where you're at. We'll turn them loose and hunt them at your place. Or you can come here, and I think they're coming Friday, and we're going to hunt them. 
You, yeah. you know, you send me, you send me a deposit, so that way I know you're serious. And, uh-huh. then, and then come hunt them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. We'll, I'll show you all the quirks or whatever. Now, I, that doesn't mean, hey, you're if you don't, if we go hunt and you're like, ah, I don't know. No, you bought the damn dogs. You yeah. take you take <laughs> some bitch with you. But I'm going to yeah. show you how to hunt these dogs. I'm going to walk you through the process and all that. So that way, when you yeah. get there, you know what to do. Well, like like that mama dog, like that that goes into one of the one of the topics I wanted to talk about, and I, I kind of wish uh, kind of wish Uncle Pat was in this because I messaged him uh regarding this when he was on on with y'all. Um, Are you but him? I told yeah, I texted him. He hasn't responded yet. I texted and asked him if he could get on the podcast real quick. So if he responds, then we'll call and at him. Yeah. Yeah, right. I, yeah. I mean, so uh, this this pig. I sent a picture of it to Nate, and that's a boar hog. It's still got its nuts. I'm looking at um, it. Yeah, my father-in-law mm-hmm. actually snared it. Um, God damn, it looks like some bitch three years ago. Three years ago, he snared it. God he my. snapped that eighth-inch snare. Um, and uh, so, man, people, my guys are going to get pissed off about this because I'm about to throw him under the bus hard. So we have been hunting this pig, and he's still there hard. I have a whole list I sent out, but I'm just going to tell you the ones I remember. First time, I, um, of course, I went with my buddy. That's how I ended up with this mama dog. We went out there. He said, man, we're going to have to do this pig one-on-one. There's no way we can send four or five dogs on mm-hmm. it. He's just, he's just going to take off. I was like, okay. So we sent her out. She bait him up. She goes, He goes, all right, man, she's got she's got him. Like, okay, sounds good. She never uh, – okay, I don't – from I, what I've hunted her, a pig's never got away from her. So – about five minutes in, I'm getting my catch dog ready, and he's like, "All right, let's let's go in." She just comes walking back, like not even running back, not just walking back, like what the heck? Because we had him on camera, by the way. Yeah. So she went we in there around. bait. She she did go bait, she, right? She, yeah, yep. Yeah, she bait him. She bait him for about eight minutes, and and of course we should have got there, but he's like, just let her let her talk to him. I was like, okay. So then she ended up baying him three times that night. I'm not. I don't need to get into detail. We didn't get to it. Whatever. Um, and and that might have been on us. The second time we went out, there was a guy that had some Parker Hound crosses or something like that. He brought three of them because he said, "Man, Walker crosses." Oh, so I I called my buddy and I said, "You know, the one that gave me the mama dog." He said, "Man, you're gonna have to get someone with some really good." He swears up and down that mama dog ain't finished, but I love that dog. She's finished to me. So he swears up and down, she ain't a hog dog, whatever. But he he goes, you're going to have to get someone with some real hog dogs. Call this guy. I said, okay. You know, the go- local guys around here said, call him. He's, he's supposed to have really good dogs. I'm not saying his dogs are bad. I call him. I said, hey, I got a pig on camera. He was there 10 minutes ago. He goes, if that pig was there 10 minutes ago, this these dogs ain't losing that pig. I said, okay. Shit. Brings him, runs the pig for over a mile or something like that. Mm. I'm like, well, shit. He, he comes back. He goes, well, the pig's out of the country. He'll never be back. I said, well, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to catch him with dogs because everybody around here, it's people in this area, uh, the older people are freaking out, sending pictures of it because it's on their cameras, whatever. Um so the the next time um i told him i said everybody's t- saying hey we can't catch it with the dog it's impossible so the next time my wife and i by ourselves i'm not shitting you it comes on camera we're laying in bed and i listen to my phone i'm bad about this even it don't matter if it's two o'clock i'm getting up and i'm going to run a big i'm terrible about it but if my phone goes off of the picture i go well my wife and i was laying there it's like 11 or something Bing, camera goes off. We, we load dogs up. We head down there. My Bell's dog, which is off Shit Eater Hill at Uncle Earl's. The only reason I bought her is because she had a glass eye. She was $100. She's my number two dog now. Everybody at Uncle Earl's said she was going to be a piece of shit. Which, where'd you, who'd you get badass. it from, do you know? An older gentleman, kind of bigger in the belly. They was right in the center. Um, uh, they were right in the center of uh, Shit Eater Hill or Eat Shit Hill or whatever they call that. Yeah, He was t- right in the center were they from Oklahoma? No, huh? I'm trying to think. No, no. Yeah. These the, he was from Louisiana. Oh, I, I okay. But I mean, he just had a bunch of random ones there, you know. But she ended I'm up. She's really good name. for me. I got it on here somewhere. I think it's Junior. But um, like so we went and. Uh, we bait the pig and I'm excited. I'm like, Oh hell yeah. They had it bait for a good solid minute. I'm on the side by side. 
because this is right across the street from where we live. And I'm on the side by side and I'm hauling ass and, and I'm not saying it's my fault or my wife's fault, but she's paying attention to Garmin. And I just drive right up on the bay, boom, right up on it, 60 feet away, pig mm. brakes, takes off. I was like, God dang it. You know, it loud noise, lights and everything coming down the road, pig's going to break. So pig broke, whatever. And I'm not saying this, I'm just telling you all the scenarios we've been through. So the next one, everybody told me again, you know, you just need to use one dog. I said, okay. So we drop one dog. She chased him freaking forever. He comes back all the time, by the way, all the time. But it's only between 11 and 2 in the morning. That's it. Yeah. No other time. Doesn't matter. Moon phase, nothing. That is the only time he comes. So, uh, and he's, he's consistent. So the next time we go out there again and we got uh, that one dog, she ran him out the country, whatever. Then the next time after that, they said, this guy has the best woods dogs around here. And I'm not going to say his name because I know, you know, everybody around here is going to be like, that's bullshit, whatever. But he does have really good dogs. And uh, he come out, he goes, there's no way. One minute, the pig was on camera. One minute later, the dogs were on camera. Did not even win this pig, did not take off after it, nothing. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, this is not right. So I start telling people these stories. I'm like, what the hell's going on? They're like, you're going to have to drop a whole dog box on them then. Rough dogs. Nah. Okay. We go out there again. We drop all these dogs on them. Uh, four or five dogs. We stayed there from 11. This is the craziest part. You're going to love this part. That old cur dog that I talked shit on that I said that can't, you know, is just slow. My bloodhound, my, and my two cur dogs, I don't even know why I brought the bloodhound. He catches, by the way. He's, he just catches the shit out of pigs. I don't know why. <laughs> but he really does. I could send you videos. You'd be like, holy shit, he does catch. He's been stabbed plenty of times. Um, but he's just a rough, he's really rough. So I put him on there because I knew he'd catch the pig. I'm, we're just dicking around trying to fill feeder, you know, drop corn. And um, I'm like, fuck it, let's drop the dogs. So we dropped the dogs. And I hear them baying, and I'm like, holy shit, it's that big pig. They're baying. They're baying the shit out of it. And I left my catch dog in the truck, so I take off running to the truck. You know, I got to get her vest on and everything. I'm like, so I'm getting her ready because I do not want to shoot this pig. I want to catch it by a dog because everybody swears you can. Yeah. So I did that. Well, it breaks. Runs one, four, I can't remember. It was like over a mile. Well, well, I didn't know this at the time. My cur dog is, is on its ass. And my cur dog goes, you know, the other three start coming back after like three quarters of a mile. They all start tracking back. But that one old cur dog I told you about chases them. So I'm like, okay, he gets out there. Um, we drive around. Well, it's, it, it's private property pulling in, but they said you can go get your dog. Um, so we go up there, and there he is. My my cur dog is in, in the pond barking at, at the, the pig. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. This couple, whoever lives there, owns the house, whatever, um, pulls up and just shines their brights right on our truck. Did not get out, nothing. So, I, I, of course, I didn't want to get in trouble or get shot or anything because they wouldn't get out of the vehicle. I got out and everything. So um, I called my dog off. I think that's still to this day, this day the biggest mistake I ever made. I called him off, got him back. And there's been a couple other people that have dropped dogs on them. And, and and these are people that swear up and down their dogs are finished and they'll stop them in the whole nine yards. We still have yet to stop this pig. And I messaged uh, Uncle Pat about that. And he told me every scenario. But when I did that snare cutting into him under his armpit, if it's throwing off a shitty scent and just making the dogs – I, I don't know. May yeah. not want it, or you're am I dropping, just making up excuses? No, no, no. You're 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 dropping on him right when you see him, right? Like yeah, on exactly. camera, like right? Maybe, yeah, one minute, like if that. He don't leave until a dog gets there. Well, I mean, like how often? Do, I mean, how long does he normally stay? Is what I'm saying. Like he he, <laughs> he leaves. I can keep him, No, I can keep him there for an hour, two hours. Well, I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. Out. Okay, so yeah. wait till he leaves. Um, and then wait about an hour. Yeah, find the Don't. general direction that he's been. We just did this yesterday. Jump him in his bed. We we just did this yesterday. Oh, um, hog comes in every morning for <laughs> between two and four. He'll stay. We didn't get there till seven. Dogs went. The the wind was coming out of the northeast, and so we had to we turned dogs loose. 
And they kept going down the bottom, but the wind kept pushing. I was like, well, let's go around this way. So we go around the other way. And we get downwind of him just a little bit. They went 200 yards, started baying. All right, now this is the first time that we've run this hog. All right, as soon as he broke and ran, after he made it 500 yards, my deal is to cut the dogs off of him. Do not let them go any further because I'm going to go now because now I got to resituate because we were going to try to bay him with one dog and catch him. So I know right now I'm like that's he's not no going way. he's not going to take it. So what I got to do is do something different. So in order to keep from educating that bastard, got to show some self restraint. So, yes. So we stop the dogs. My dogs are still fresh, ain't even ain't even breathing hard good. So we get we get them cut, but we were in a position where we could get to them. A lot of times you're not. Yeah. So we get to that position, get the dogs up. I was like, okay, well, he'll come back in a couple of days. Shit, he was back this morning at four o'clock. So <laughs> at four o'clock tomorrow morning, I'll be there. But, you know, well, maybe not at four, but whenever he leaves, I'm gonna I'll I'll leave the house. And whenever yeah. he leaves, I'm gonna ease right down there and I know which way he's going. There's other game cameras throughout the property that pick him up where he's traveling. He's got the same travel pattern. He does the same thing. So when we drop dogs up here at this one spot, I'm going to go to this other spot and be sitting there as well. So if he breaks, I'm going to put something straight, straight in his face. Yeah. That's that's the only way I know how. And I've done this with hogs in the past. Uh, though we went to North Carolina. Now, there's hogs a can't be, can't be run, we- can't be caught with dogs. Literally, the, the, the hog's entire ass in from above his tail to his hooves scarred. was scars. It was scarred up. Oh, damn. You know how far that son bitch ran? After the dogs got him? Or, uh. or picked him up? 30 feet. <laughs> I'm, I'm dead damn. This is the, probably the biggest hog that we've caught. One of the biggest. And those cur dogs went in there and bait him in his bed. He got up, and we got GoPros on the dog, so we get to see every little bit of it. Yeah, that's how we know. Like he yeah. was asleep. Yeah, he was laying there <laughs> sleeping. That some bitch. Oh, oh, midnight went to spitting in his ear. Give him that fucking alarm clock. And that some bitch stood up and shook <laughs> a little bit, and he turned around, and Sally's right there. Hell, Matt was right there. I don't know. There was a fucking water dogs on his ass, and he tried to move, but Lord help him, he couldn't move. He could not move. He couldn't bear the pressure. Yeah. So that's how you catch them some bitches. You either do, like I said, yeah. you either put a big pack and catch him off guard. Don't let him be awake. Don't let oh, that some bitch be running. Yeah. I'm but waiting till the shankathon now to even try running them. I don't blame you. Get him fat <laughs> as hell where he can't run fast. Yeah, feed him, <laughs> feed, feed the shit oh, out am. of him. Michael, Michael Spiler, and those guys win all the time. There's several of them that do. Yeah. I see hogs. He sends me pictures. And he said, when you can name them and tell them to sit, that's when you got one ready. And he, there, there's other guys out there that get mad about it. They're like, man, I'm so much always doing that. No, they're doing their homework. Uh-huh. They, they don't have them in a pen. They, they, they ain't actually got going out there making them sit. No, but they're I'm just, just saying, but they're, they're feeding yeah, them and yeah, they're yeah, watching. Yeah. They let them grow big. You can't catch a big hog. If it's a little one, that's just simple yeah. math. So yep. if yep. you want to, if you want to catch that hog, like yeah, you're gonna have to do something different than what you've been doing, of course, because it ain't working. Uh, you can't say, well, it's your dogs. Nope, that's not the problem either, because you've done had I mean different people with all these different dogs come in there. You know, I used to catch the biggest hogs with the smallest dogs. Yeah, because it's like fighting someone, you know. Why, why would you want to fight a bunch of big dogs? Yeah. All right, hold on just a second. While we're talking about that, oh. we're gonna we're gonna get back in this with uh with Pat right quick. He said he he can he can talk. Let me let me get right here uh, and call this rascal. There it is. I was trying to find his damn phone number. I'm gonna, I'll try not to. 
I'll hang up on you. What's up? What's happening? I'm trying to merge. Hello? You got him? Hey, you there? Yeah, what's up, man? What's happening with you? Uh, arguing with these dogs. I hear you. What y'all got going? I was talking to Alan. Uh, Alan Adams. Yeah. He said he had a couple of pups from you, or by way of you, or whatever. Alan, you on there, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. Sorry. Well, there's Uncle Pat. Y'all get to talking. Hey, Uncle Pat. I uh, Remy had you breed two or something that he really wanted. Um, he said it was a July cross. Does that sound yeah, it's right? Solid. Probably so. Yeah, he he brought a couple of them over, man, and they're god damn, they're terrors. Well, you like them? Oh yeah, I love them. I do. I really do. Um, they're I, that's why we were talking. We don't know exactly how old they are. Um, would you roughly know? Gosh, um, would they be four months old? That's what I was thinking. Somewhere yeah. around there, uh, I was. I can't remember when Remy came by. Everybody, he, I think he got them the day we killed that big hog at the yep, Greenwood yep, Rodeo. Yep. yep, that's exactly so, correct. Miles got one of those too, didn't he, Pat? I think so. Yeah, so it should be between four and five months old. It's either a full mate of Miles's or a half mate, but they within a week. They within a week of each other. Gotcha. You know, like I said, I should I should be a better dog breeder. I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, when, when do I start running them then? I guess. When should, I mean, I. Are they? They probably should already be banned stuff. They. Oh yeah, they were doing that shit at chickens at like eight weeks old. Oh, they don't. Old. Be, they, they're a lot like me. They like fried chicken. You can't even pull all the feathers on that chicken's ass. I imagine. They're they gonna be rough though. That male dog, he'll be catching the. the big bar hog we got he'll catch it through the fence oh yeah well you ain't gonna bait yeah, the yeah. son of a bitch you're gonna catch him yeah that's gonna be my problem <laughs> there ain't no fucking well, problem you said you could catch no oh, southern crash but I, southern I, cross I, no, makes I'm a running dog I, 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 no i'm trying to get rid of the hey look that's my <laughs> preference i'm trying to get the rough dogs out of it shit hey, look, the first time i ever took carter and ryan hunting right I got a 12 foot piece of one inch schedule 80 PVC and I'm using it as a walking stick. It may have been 10 foot long. I don't remember. It's pretty long. And he said, What's that for? I said, I'm going to show you here a little bit. That's what we find <laughs> Something like, Get back behind me, Jesus. Come on. Dang, with me. I, look, they made this big old piggy sound at the top and she's like, Finna have pigs. She don't want to get up. I don't want her to get up either. And they, boy, they really, they tearing her ass up. So I just kind of stand on top of her and I go to chicken ass. I ain't going to. What, so that's why they, they all my stuff weighs about 10 feet back because my PVC pipe is 10 foot and I'm holding about two foot. So I got about an eight foot swing. So, <laughs> and that, and that's, no, that'd be the girl dog that he, she was part of that education right there. Now, I, I seen some shit on Facebook earlier was talking about you need to get them real dogs out. Quit talking about all this on the podcast shit, you know. Well, so, I woke them out. We, we all know I woke them out one time this year, and I've been in one fish fight this year. That's so, it. <laughs> I mean, I just look. They, they, these guys, they talk all this shit. They think they know something. They've never run one 26 miles. That's right. Uh, That's they ain't never point. ended up in another county or across a three-mile wide lake in another state or across the Mississippi River. They had to go all the way up to Natchez to cross and come back down to Monterey. You know, to get your damn dogs. They, they they don't they talk all this shit. I do know this. This is what I do know. They ain't nothing wrong with a plot hound. I was just kind of chiming in with Will Moose, a friend of mine. Uh, yeah. and, uh, we were just kind of giving them a fit, you know. <laughs> so, but I do know this. I've been to Bugville, Arkansas. 400 hounds, speed and drive, and they score them on any kind of big game. They cross the road running. You know what I've never seen make the podium? A brindle dog. A, a plot hound. No, no, no. I've seen a brindle dog make it. But oh, it was not but a plot hound. Okay, I got you. A plot hound. I've never seen one of them win in the top end. Was that a, what kind of wrong, brindle dog so, was it? Cross? Oh, my, you know, my, my July's are brindle. Oh, my Jesus. Yeah. Well, you probably put some plot in 
I ain't got no plot. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Al? Hold up now. Hold up now. Hold some up now. Of those, some of those you gave to Remy were, were brindle. I stayed away from them. I went with the yellow dogs because Cody hates them. Yeah, but um, the brindle in them may be a little bit of plot. Like maybe a 16th or something. Look, well, shit, what what have I got then? They, they, it, I mean, there's nothing wrong Probably with a plot. Fear. There's not a damn thing wrong with a good plot. A good plot's just as good as a good blue kick. It just takes you 10000 to get to the song. That's right. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, some of the best dogs I've ever been in the woods with, okay, somebody said this, and, I, and, and you saw it, Cody Godwin. Well, Cody Godwin's got cur, uh, plot influence, cur dog crosses and blah, blah. That ain't a plot. That's right. That ain't a plot. <laughs> that's exactly uh, to right. Be, uh, hey, look, to be honest with y'all, I'm serious, but that that's what I kind of wanted to do was initiate the cur into the plot. But well, that's I, a, I mean, the scenario for a heterozygous cross. I mean, right. that's an elf one. That's a brindle. Uh, no different than a, a white faced cow and a, a, a damn. Uh, Whatever kind of bull they put on them to make them tiger stripe brimmer bull to yeah. put to make them tiger stripe cows, they bring all that money and they're mean and they're resilient and they're tough. Well, the plot has its place. Don't get me wrong. I love them. I, I do love them. But the deal was Von Plot said he can run as good as a foxhound. Well, he might run as good as a foxhound in Von Plot's day, but these son of a bitches I got to run against. They looking at that son of a bitch when they cross the road. You heard me? That's right. <laughs> well, that's what you want to uh, see. I mean they 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 cross so fast you can't see them. You can't you can't tell what number they are if you had if you had a number on. You done got hey you didn't understand it either till you went down there and saw it for yourself. No, I, I remember you I, were exactly. About I always I always had my own opinion of it, and I kept it to myself. I never one time ever expressed, hey, I'm not going to do this or that, blah, blah, blah. And I went and watched it, and I said, holy shit. That some bitch come across 25 miles an hour, and I'm talking about smoking. And not because he just got dumped out. This is at the end of a – they're starting these hunts at fucking 3 o'clock in the morning. And it's noon. And, and I mean, they have run this son of a bitch for 10 hours. They, they drunk in this basket. And, and, that, and, that, and that, that yoke or whatever's coming out front is not trotting. He's smoking. He's trying to keep. He's trying to get ahead. I literally seen him run him to death. When the coyote stops, he yep. dies because they kill him. Oh, they stretch him out, babe. They stretch him out. They got to run. Okay, so the foxhounds I use to breed into these cur dogs to get these dogs, like what you got there, them them chicken killers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that ain't the first chicken that puppy I got rid of. That ain't the first chickens to die. I promise you. <laughs> so. Uh, they run to catch. You got to know what breeds of foxhounds run to catch. Still, they still guys in Missouri. They, I'm, I can't call his name right now. He's a good friend, John Blant. John Blant, the Showtime guy. Mm -hmm. You believe okay? He runs to catch now. That old dog. He's won all that. I mean, like I mean, this uh, won tens of thousands. Like Goose, he wins like Goose does. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, no matter what you breed. It's got to run to catch. The things with plots is most of them run to catch from what I saw. Yeah. I had, I had, uh, I mean, I don't know a lot about plots. I probably had 40 at one time. So, I mean, I've been there. I bought a whole litter <laughs> to crock it. The, the plot that um, Monica Wheelish used to make the Bruno dog she places in some of the bands. Yeah. You know, he had black mouth and had plot. Uh, yeah. I gave her, I turned down 8,000 for him. So he must have been a pretty good wood dog. Uh, and I ended up giving him the money, was a, but he was off a. Uh, I tell you how he was bred: Taylor Crockett Tiger and something. Taylor Crockett something. It was a double Crockett bred dog, uh, but he was bunt skinned, so he was registered in the American Tree Dog Association, mm -hmm. and he was mean as hell. Alan, and, Alan's got a. You got. You said you got one from Mike Colley, didn't you? Yep, yep, yep. Probably a pretty good dog if it come from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. I got the papers and everything on them. It, Tracker uh -huh. and Wonder is his parents. I believe it's uh I believe they're bear dogs though. But Oh I mean, yeah. I mean all plots are probably run a bear. 
I tell you what, I tell you what else they'll do. They'll bay a nail in about a mile and a half asking for a friend. <laughs> if you go to New Mexico, <laughs> asking for about elk about a mile. You think elk could run further than that, but he really can't. Not in the Rockies. That old plot will bay him up about a mile and a half. But yeah, we were, we were talking. They, okay. No, go ahead. So, you, so, so, you got to, so that's a Taylor Crockett breed of dogs. Well, Taylor Crockett's claim to fame on the back of that book they wrote about him, I think it says, Mr. Crockett, don't you lose a great percentage of your young dogs before they're a year and a half old? He said, of course, son, but they die with hair in their goddamn teeth. There you go. <laughs> you, see where, you see where I'm going with that? That's and, right. Yeah, I do. I do, but they die with hair in their goddamn teeth. I mean, they got to run to catch. So if you run in poodles, but somebody still has to run to – and I don't necessarily mean catch like a bulldog, but like bring it to bay. Yes. To stop it and make him turn and face and stand the line. And I know you know what that means. Mm-hmm. Just stand there and look all out of whack and not try to move because you you know you're gonna lose. Yep, that's that, that anyway, that's what the ultimate goal is. Well, I we got on that subject earlier. Was talking about the 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 post that was on Facebook. It was talking about the podcast and stuff, and Alan, he he's he's the one that won the sportsman class with a five zero dog down there at Uncle Earl's. Well, yeah. so he was talking about listening to the podcast and how much it that he's learned from it because he wasn't a hog hunter; he trained labs, and right. so he started hog hunting. And, and it really it really kind of threw me off, even as more than normal because. Like he was talking about him and his guys, they like they'll be doing something, and if they need to know something, they'll just go back to episode such and such, and uh, and get the information. So, you know what we're doing by providing this information, it's helping those who don't know it. You know, and we, I mean, you know, we we hear it from these other guys who know everything. You know, they know all of it. And they yeah. they don't see no use in a podcast. Like we're we're wasting time. We're fake. We're phonies or whatever. Sellouts. I don't know what the fuck you want to call it. But uh, hell, I'd rather be that and be helpful in life than yeah. But those those are the same guys that leave you on the at the boat launch when you're there thirty minutes early. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're yeah they they're not they're not what they should be. Here, here's the thing. You want hounds to stick around? Stop hating people. Mm-hmm. I can promise you right now, there's some goddamn information Nazi scuffling through Buckville, Arkansas deer dog outside field trial records trying to find a plot to prove me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Like I give a shit. It'd be, it'd be the first I mean, time you ever been wrong. I mean, I mean, if this, I don't know. If, so here's the thing. I got hardware from there. You see, you hear what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I didn't even go. I just sent the dog. I ain't been out the pen in a year. I come back. I got hardware from there, about three or four feet tall. So, or whatever I got. I might have got a plaque. I don't even know. It's at my mom and daddy's house over there. There you go. So, uh, and this ain't been that long ago. And that's the daddy to the, all these goddamn hot dogs I'm producing. And the daddy to... That Perez boy that was at the bay, and you remember the big red puppy? I said, and I said, where'd you get that at? Because I know it was just like my stuff. He said, oh, I got that from your kennel partner, William. That damn William doesn't snug over here and bread a gym. I didn't care, but, it, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I said, well, it may a hog. He said, you, it wouldn't have been there if it wouldn't have. That's right. I mean, so it's a full walker, and he thought enough of it to enter it in the two-dog cup or whatever. Hell yeah. Or he brought it. I don't know if he entered it or not, but he had it there. Well, that's that's why we had Alan, you know, on tonight is, you know, he's new. He's still new to this, but he's invested in it. Like he's vested, not just invested. He's, he hunts. He, he's been through all a bunch of the bullshit, you know, buying dogs off Facebook and getting screwed over by other guys and, you know, the normal bullshit that comes along with it. So he's starting yeah. to settle in. He's got some good pups and good dogs, and he's, he's starting to, you know, starting to see what's happening and, and, and catching hogs all the time. So that that's the kind of people we need. Yeah, and them, them pups he got from me, ought to fit, the way they hunt down there, it ought to fit his style perfect. It ought to just, they ought to just. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, if they don't, I'll make. How much did you pay for them? You know, Remy gave it to me. <laughs> Henry, <laughs> see, I don't charge like people say. No, no, oh, yeah, you know, no. I got, you know, I got five hundred dollars. Man, I look, I'm giving no. to you, dog. Uncle Pat, when he came by, I told him he, he. I said, "Hey, meet me at the church." I said, "I am not giving you a dollar for these dogs." I said, "I'm." My wife said, "No more." We get there, fucking Remy pulls them out, and I'm like, "All right, I'll take this one." It was the yappy one, just being an asshole. I was like, "I'll take that one." And my wife starts playing with it. She's like, "Well, we'll go ahead and take two. And I'm really actually happy that we did. Oh, I really yeah. am because they're they're turning out to be good dogs. I mean, I mean, they really are. Uh, Baying wise, I'm going to tell you right now, their temperament is is a bit different. But um, <laughs> and, but I, I I'm really used to the you know the the very that that's when we get into the catch dog world. I'm there is a catch dog and then there's a catch dog. There is a huge difference, and the people yeah. down here are terrible with catch dog. I cannot stand that shit. I have I my dog has got to be obedient. If I'm walking in them damn woods, my dog is not pulling me into those woods. But a lot of these new guys get around these old these these other guys that say, "Oh, a catch dog's a dime a dozen." That is a complete bullshit lie. That is not true at all. Because if you got just a, a dog dragging you through the woods and and you can't get it off and you're constantly breaking its teeth trying to pull it off the whole nine yards, I just don't think that's as beneficial as my dog that I can walk in. That She's that's a dog that will lead a little bit. But. That's a dog I that know. will catch. That's not a fucking catch dog. That's a dog that will catch it. Hey, if y'all see me pull up and like, I got some other than my shotgun. I got, I actually got a bulldog because I do own some. Believe it or not, I got mm-hmm. some catch If you see me put a leash on them, uh, uh-uh. uh, something's wrong. Right something's wrong. I'm not leading that son who's dragging me through them broad. And he better, he, he better. So okay, so uh, you a dog trainer? I'm not really a dog trainer. You way more dog trainer than me. How many hours on a, how many hours on handle before you ever let them catch? You do you do you estimate you putting in there? With with oh man, I would say. Oh, no, but I can't say I can't say catch dogs as in. I, I'm talking from the lab world. You know, this is the first catch yeah. dog that I've been doing obedience with. But what I would consider obedience, it it really does depend upon the age of course and, and the bloodline helps a lot but rough estimate i would say uh, no and i'm serious like sit heel you know the whole nine yards i would say probably about 15 to 25 days and i mean so, that's two so, hours so, a day so two hours a day 20 to 50 hours so 50 to 60 hours I was gonna say 75 <laughs> yeah but i mean you're 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 about right i mean and, yeah I, that, about, I, oh, so 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 say you work at your job at so so and you make thirty dollars an hour. Yeah. That just made that catch dog work at hours twenty one hundred dollars. That's exactly fucking yeah. right. Yeah. You got it. So don't come at me for nothing. Two hundred dollar catch dog. Two or three hundred dollars. Because if it's my catch dog, I don't know if y'all know Daisy very well, but everybody thinks she's a house dog, but it's kind of gotten out that she might put her mouth on something. Like, if I take a step, like, if I was going to go hunting, I'd have to give her a 10-hour refresher right quick. Like, I mean, because she, she, she want to mind because I don't ever make her mind no more. But yeah, she is. That son of a bitch she got a good handle. But you, I mean, I'd have to, like, like chastise her a little bit, you know? Yeah, like, you get, have to refresh her. I got you. But uh, you gotta remind them. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Alan. So, so, so you twenty, you twenty one hundred dollars into this catch dog, in just your time. That ain't no fee shots. Mm-hmm. None of that stuff. So we getting up at around three grand. Yep. Just a catch dog. <laughs> Dime a dozen. You you can find them anywhere. And people are like I go through catch dogs like crazy, and I'm mm-hmm. like, well, it's either you. The dog or both? Ask Ask Alan McCon how it was with me Saturday. Wasn't it Saturday we went or Sunday? Yeah. Saturday, what, whatever day we went hunting, and I had a little old young catch dog. And we usually he stays on the box. We don't lead. I don't lead him. Well, he didn't act like he wanted to lead the other day. And I'm not worried about the hunt. I ain't worried about none of that shit. All I'm worried about is working this dog. This dog has to know what he's doing. 
And and Alan was laughing at it because I mean I know he knows I you know it's it's one of those deals it's repetitive motion, so out yeah. of so so I probably spent an hour with him, so I still got I still got forty more hours at least because I've already got time into him. Yeah. And but now will he put his teeth on him? Hell yeah. Will he hold him? Yes. He he very seldom has us has he missed or got slung. He's a good catch dog so far, but he's not a catch dog yet. Cause like I said, he ain't got that handle, but I don't see why anybody would ever sell that dog for two or $300. Yeah. I, I'll you give know, it to you first. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, so I'm going to give everybody a sneak preview of what I've been up to, to say something like, uh, oh, that, that girl that honey with you, she come honey with me Sunday. Oh, oh yeah. And, uh, we rode, we, we saddled up, we went through the under. I had four coyote races first. <laughs> I jumped a pack of baby coyotes, half grown. I tried, almost caught me one. I was going to make a catch dog out of that. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, they was just, I, I got outrun. The dog didn't get outrun and they killed it before I could get them off. They, the more yellow, the more buttermilk is pretty vicious. But I never <laughs> owed my mouth. So come back by the house, got us something to drink. We left the house at seven thirty. We was back at nine fifteen. One hundred seventy five pound male, huh? That's what I'm talking about. But I didn't have a hog dog one on the ground. I had two thirteen or fourteen month old puppies. I had a bay pen reject from triple seven. She had two little. You know her little old puppies ain't before five months old. Yeah. And and my and I had my lab on the ground. But we was out. We was gone. Um, Hour and forty five minutes, and we had a hundred. Well, you seen that hog on my shoulder, whatever it was. Yeah, I see. I see. It was a good hog, one hundred and sixty to two hundred, whatever. I don't know. But I <laughs> with the with but the, I didn't have a hog dogs. dog on the ground. I didn't have a hog dog on the, what I would consider a hog dog on the ground. I mean, yeah. I done run for coats. I'm gonna tell the full story on the other podcast. This is pretty entertaining, but all right. Well, that'll work. You're talking about like the catch dogs. Just because of the catch a hog, don't make it a catch dog. Mm -hmm. And just because you found a hog with it, don't make it a hog dog by far. Mm -hmm. No. They give him, I'll, I'll just say this they give him Will Booth all that shit. All they got to do is show up. Oh, yeah. Now, Will, Will's got some hog dogs. Oh, he's always had them, you know. Yeah. And, me and him were uh, talking the other day, and he, he was, he told me, he said, he said, he said, man, I'd like to have a good straight. He said, I don't care if it's open, silent, whatever. He said, but put his nose in each track, good, slow, accurate track dog, a hound. And, and, and like I said, that's me and him talking. And uh, he's got a purpose for it. He's got dogs that catch hogs all the time. But he's, oh, got, yeah. he's got something in mind he's working on. Oh, hey, look, ain't we all? Yeah. Oh, somebody asked me the other day, and I'm going to go ahead and throw this on the podcast so they can message me um, about my tree. You know, I got three kennels, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. But I got these here in Texas, but I got two in Louisiana. One of them is full rest of tree and walkers of the finest order. And uh, I don't ever mess with them too much over there. But uh, I got a litter of puppies coming. Uh enough. When Grand Night Bitch, and I'm not for sure what the male is. I know it's the, the correct, or he wouldn't have did it. So yeah. she's been two weeks. So if somebody wants some of them, they would probably be. Well, I ain't gonna rest. I ain't gonna rest in the sun. I tell you what, they out of. I had to like dig it up to make put three hundred dollars, and you get you a solid, solid son of a bitch. You know, yeah. Uh, here, here in a couple of two or three months. All right. So who? Somebody was asking me about them the other day because somebody remembered. I got you. And, uh, I know I'm not going to pull them. Ten, four. You know, I get half the litter. I get half the litter. Hell yeah. I'll give him some. And I'll give him the money for the feed and the shots and all that. That's right. I keep, I keep my interest in that over there because I want to start back coon hunting. Mm hmm. Well, they, got, why, they got some big money coon hunts now. Yeah, I don't do all that money shit. I couldn't win. Hey, look, I couldn't get a date right now in a women's prison with a false heart. <laughs> you believe that? 
Oh, you believe that? No, I don't believe shit you tell him. <laughs> I had a woman sneak up on me the other day. Yeah. By God. Sne- yeah, we're going to talk about that after the call's over with. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're going we gonna to do that on the flip. That's right. You know, right the flip. Oh. Said, and look at the hogs over my shoulder says, is them hogs really that bad? I'm texting her back, boy, you ought to be here. You'd see these dogs getting flipped. Uh-huh. Then I turn around and there it is looking at me. Oh that, my God. That's it. Hey, y'all messed up, didn't it? It was funny. It was funny. But paybacks is hell. Yeah. You know I, mean? I know. I was just thinking, I was like, damn, I, I know it's coming. Yeah, I'm going to have to slip. I'm going to have to slip. That's it. Believe it or not, I just had a brown dog walk up on the porch scratching fleas. Oh, hey. So, somebody's plotting and got loose. <laughs> oh no, that's no <laughs> no. This in here got this in here got four dew claws on his back leg. That's oh, a, yeah. um, that's some, that I think somebody's Kimmer. got some Kimmer in him, yeah. Yeah, that's that old Tanner Her and Ed Barnes, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. What they call that? Oklahoma what? Oh, what the hell Oklahoma hell? breakdown. That's that Oklahoma breakdown right there. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, did you have anything else you was going to ask Pat? Or, or, um, or was wanting to talk about? I mean, we got him on here. He'll wear it out. Yeah, I, I mean, this is actually, this is a big one uh, pertaining to, I guess, everybody can pretty much oh, handle God. this one. I, I've, I've been in this situation already as well, but I would like some, you know, to help these other guys as well. Uh, what happens when, when you... Um, lose the dog I, I know everybody's gonna say fuck that dog it ain't supposed to you know whatever but it ain't working whatever the case may be but say your garmin shuts off you know your collar quits working you lose service you know your dog's not underwater just your dog's lost in general and you've been hunting for hours going to the last spot and everything like that what what's the best route to take when that happens go to the last spot and pull your shirt off and throw it on the ground yep that's yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I told them too about that. Um, now, as far as the Garmin quitting, as far as it, my Garmin probably ain't never gonna quit because it ain't ever been used. I don't. I, I just run old school. If the same don't come home, I don't gotta feed them. Yep. And I, now when I break him, when I break them real dogs out, it, if you ain't looking, I might have a Garmin and a Quick Track on there. That old Quick Track six thousand, son, it don't go bad. That's right. I favor the market. <laughs> well, a, 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 another one we all we've all hit on a lot that i guess never really been discussed on the podcast or maybe i didn't catch it because like i said once again i've listened to everyone and all the new guys that are going to listen to this especially my buddies and, and the and the younger gentlemen that i take hunting with me um this is a big one is the um terrain i guess you could say in the conditions you're hunting in I've had people, you know, I'm like, all right, man, this is your, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm a pro or nothing. I'm not like that. I'm just, if if someone wants to hunt, I'm willing to take them and kind of help them out and show them kind of what I know. But, um, I've had people show up in waders (laughs) it's, it's 90 degrees outside, you know? And they're like, well, you said to hunt the river. I'm like, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to die the first hundred yards. We're chasing down dogs. Now are they, Um, are they chest waders or? Yeah, or, or yeah, I'm boots? saying full on. Oh, hunting yeah, you're talking like, about yeah, damn. Yeah, and with neoprene and the whole nine yards. Oh I lord. Mean, I, I I wanted to kind of touch base because I mean where I hunt out a lot, I can go from piney woods to river bottom to marsh in a matter of two hours. Yeah. You know, um, I, and I can do that. I can do that here in East Texas in 200 yards. Mm-hmm. I'm here right now, Uncle Pat. I'm literally, I'm right in the Deweyville area right now. So. Oh yeah, I'm two. I'm two hours north of Deweyville. But I just talked to this old girl from Deweyville. She said she might be coming northbound after a while. So mm-hmm. we're gonna see what that's about. Oh, did I say this old recording? Hey, edit that out. <laughs> we had to edit a bunch of shit out, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't give a shit. Everybody knows that's the one. That's where the one lives that had the horse trailer. Remember I told you come oh, down the curve. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With the partner finger telling me what to do, what you do, exactly what she told me. That's yes, it. Yeah. You go. Uh, but yeah, I think she's coming tomorrow to buy a car from somebody up here. I hear you. But, but yeah, if we could. Uh, you know, tell kind of explain the different conditions and and how to be prepared for that um, to help them ahead of time. 
Man, you just, all I ever do is I try to wear snake boots if I can, but if I can't, I just wear tennis shoes and bring extra socks, a bunch of extra socks and clothes. Mm -hmm. And dress for success. You know me, I run about half naked, too, and people's like, how do you keep from getting them brows? I I'm just, I got that good skin. Mm -hmm. I, no, I don't know. <laughs> but I do. I mean, if you'll see my hunting pictures, like I got, like my shirt, I might not even have one on. Yeah. And I hunt in shorts a lot, and you know why? Because it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. I don't know how many people that's done put on there about old old bulldog done. He, you know, y'all watch out. Heat's a bad thing. Well, son of a bitch, in April you didn't know it was gonna get hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's don't right. Put, don't put me another. If you don't put a, I'm just gonna start unfriending them. That's I don't right. want to hear about your bulldog guy from heat exhaustion. Mm -mm -mm. I, it, I want. I want. I want to hear. I want to hear in April what you're doing to prevent in August. Your bulldog died. That's right. From heat. I we, mean, we it got seems two like dogs. Every August he gets hot. Yeah, we got two dogs now. I mean, I want to turn loose so bad, but they're not in shape, and it's like, well, I ain't gonna turn loose right now. Hell no. I mean, and if some bitches are fat, that like I, I might ease them into it, but I ain't gonna just turn them. And they, they'll do it, you know. But at the same time, what do you do to prevent it? But, but talking about, you know, what to wear in different places, Alan, I mean, I, I'm like with, with Pat, you know, a good pair of boots, bring you some extra shots, socks and a shirt or whatever. I, I, I wear knee boots most of the time. And if they get wet, they get wet. If you're going to go swimming, pull the sun bitches off. Nathan, yeah, Nathan wears a pair of damn just lace up. Hunt I boots, wear six inch lace up boots. Yeah, like, and that's it. Everywhere, yeah. e everywhere. That's it. I need, yeah, I mean, because you're gonna I, get I born, wet. I was born wet. It ain't bothering yeah, me. Yeah, you're gonna get wet, so it don't fucking matter. Hey, y'all, yeah. y'all know what I wear when I can get away most of the time. Some of I wear on cloud nurse shoes from like the hospital, like the women's wearing. Oh no, on their feet all the time. I hunt them, I got them on clouds or whatever. They about okay. sixty or seventy dollars on the internet. You that's what I wear most of the time. You got that rich money. You got that big money. Uh, me? Yeah, big money. I ain't working a year. If you were wearing on clouds to go hunting. That's some that's some money right there. I tell you what, when you got diabetes, you take care of your feet no matter what. That's right. You, you might miss a meal, but you got something good on your feet. I can promise um, you that. I'm more worried about my fucking feet than I was anything. I don't want to be no <laughs> stuff footed some bitch running around here if I can prevent it. I can't go if I lose one of them. I, I walk in a circle. I, <laughs> well, that motherfucker be staked out like an old bulldog on the chain, just around and around and go. Yeah, I'm not going very. Far. Hey, look, I got a sneaky suspicion that next August is going to be hot too. You think so? I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and put that. I'm gonna go ahead and put my name on that. that weather with Uncle Pat. Hot as hell too. We got the weather with Uncle Pat. Farmer's Almanac yeah. 2025. Caught as hell in August, boys. So I don't want to hear about nobody losing a bulldog due to the heat. Because we know that son bitch is going to be hot. It's coming. It's coming. It's so. going to be cold. Clean water buckets is more important in the winter when it's cold than in the summer. Yep. Y'all take that for what you want to, but if you don't believe me, man told me that his name was Floyd Boudreaux. I think he knows something about a dog. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got that from him. So if anybody wants to dispute that, call him. Don't call me. That's what I learned. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and and water is very important during the winter. Cut. That's what I'm saying. My it's dogs don't. When it's cold, mine when don't it's even want to drink. Half half of mine don't want to drink water. You know what I mean? They'll they'll drink just enough. And sometimes hey. I'm like these some bitches are dehydrated. You know. I mean, and you got to know your limits. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to the Special Olympics this week and try to run no race. Much <laughs> less the regular Olympics. I'm not even going to the Special Olympics and try to run. I'm, and believe it or not, I'm kind of fluffy. I know I'm dead sexy, but then I'm still a little happy, you know, yeah. around the middle. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even running against the Special Olympics hey, in you. August. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, people. That's right. Well, man, that's a, I'm, I'm glad you called in. We, uh, we didn't know if we were going to get to talk to you on, on a short notice well, like that. I know you're I busy. Was on the phone. I was on the phone with a girl, believe it or not. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> True. And I get off the phone. I got a message to call. I said, well, I'm ready to call them before I go in the house. That's you it. Have to call. Oh, so. 
ten folk. Well, all right. Well, we'll let you we'll let you get back to your rat killing, and uh, we'll finish I, this one up with Alan. We done been at it about two and a half hours already. We're gonna have to knock her on you, out. Yeah, I'm glad you like your puppies, Alan. All right, I appreciate it. We'll get you some more if them don't work out. You let me know. <laughs> I got some old ones now. <laughs> That's it. All right, all right, Curtis. Y'all, y'all be careful. I'll be talking with Take you. Take care, huh? See you, buddy. All right, love y'all. Be good. Love, love you, man. You. All right, you still there? Yes, sir. I'm try I'm learning how to do all these merging and switches and all that with these calls. <laughs> I don't know how to do that shit. So, well, anyway, so that was Uncle Pat, y'all. The one and only. He's a he's a wealth of knowledge, but sometimes you got to listen to the whole thing before you can ever make an assumption of what the answer is. <laughs> he's like a good big well, he, He's he going to take it riddles. way over there and then bring it back to you. He talks and he'll tell you. He, talk, he talks in riddles a lot of times. And there's a lot of people like, well, they don't know what he's talking about. No, maybe you don't understand what he's talking about. Maybe, maybe you don't understand how he's saying it. And if you don't understand it, maybe it's because your perspective is not fitted mm-hmm. to comprehend. All right. Now, yeah. let's see. What was our next deal we was going to do some talking about? Or did you have anything else on here? I was yeah, trying to keep yeah, up. I, I, I got one. Um, I man, I don't know how I missed this one. Uh, I just was looking at our chat. Um, it just kind of my experience, and I, and I was, you know, I don't want to put any other vest down. I don't know if you want me saying. No, you you say I Southern do. Cross. Okay, yeah, Southern Cross most definitely is my go-to. Um, yeah. and I, I I'm just the reasoning why. Um, as a newcomer, I know they're expensive as shit to get the custom one, but if you're, if you're catching good boar hogs, you know, and you want to add some Kevlar, um, this was my experience. I was like, gosh, damn, $400 for a vest. Um, after you do all the add-ons and everything, it's quite a bit. Um, but it's most definitely worth it because I did buy another vest from another, I, if you want me to say it, I'll say which one it is. No, I, that's up to you. Yeah. Uh, I, the swamp dog or something like that. Yeah. Um, I did buy theirs. Uh, mm-hmm. that was the original one I used, but every time I cut my bulldog loose, it, it would complete. Uh, she's always been cut Yeah. every time. Well, I, uh, there's only two in cut. the game to me and that's, that's hardcore and Southern cross. Uh, yeah. that, that to me, it, it, you know, I'm not saying other ones don't make a, a good product. I don't really know. I haven't ran anything else. In over a decade. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But, so th- those yeah, to I, me are the, the only two that that count in my world is Southern Cross and Hardcore. Mm-hmm. You know, and Southern Cross, I, I, I've i leaned more toward them in the, in the past several years because of the, the style of vest that they're making. It works great for me. I'm, I'm good friends with Michael. I, I have some of his vests that I run as well. I run them on these certain dogs and I run Southern Cross on these other dogs, you know, but the Southern Cross stuff is you, you can continue on and, and talk about that. Preach it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I did, I went online, I, I customized, uh, well, actually what happened is of course my bulldog got cut up really, really bad. Um, and my bloodhound, I know it's crazy, but she, he helps out a lot. Trust me. Um, he, he has a Southern Cross Aussie vest. And he was stabbed. He got punctured pretty good. He one pig we had to we had to patch him up quite a bit. Um, and after I put that Southern Cross on him, I mean he's just very rough. And he has not had any of those. He hasn't had a cut since. Um, and that's with the Aussie vest, which doesn't it doesn't cover nowhere near as much as the catch vest does. Mm-hmm. But um, I that's, don't want to put run him those. in. The, yeah, I don't want to put him in the category as the as a running catch dog because. He doesn't necessarily always hold on. He, you know, he does let go. But um, when my bulldog gets there, of course, like every other dog, they all jump on. But um, he uh, he hasn't been cut up, and um, I, I am still waiting on my new ordered uh, Southern Cross Cut Vest. I bought another one from a buddy, but um, I just ordered one last night directly from the Southern Cross uh, Cut Gear. I did a custom one. Um, just like this one just changed up the colors a little bit, but, uh, it's, it's most definitely what I coming on new. I wish I was told this. I wish someone told, I know y'all hear the 
Southern Cross, you know, on podcasts and, oh, man, you know, it's just a thing with a logo that's adding more money to it. No, it's not that. It's legit. I promise you. Yeah. Um, we, I wish I had someone tell me that. We, we had we had some videos. Uh, and now our YouTube channel got got took down. Uh, yeah, yeah. Last last year, the end of last year. And I know we had some videos and where I talked about Southern Cross and stuff. Uh, we might need to put out some more on that. Yeah. Some, some more information definitely. and stuff. And because, I mean, Dave, Dave's super good at, you know, at, at dealing with folks and making sure the product is where it needs to be. If anything happens, he stands behind his product. Uh, like I said, I haven't dealt with others in that sense uh, in a long time. Uh, and, and like I said, hardcore would be the the other one. Same same scenario, same deal. They're mm-hmm. good good products. They stand behind their products. Uh, they listen to the customers as well on you know how they fit, how they work, how they you know how they can run, how the how the dogs move, all these things. So I mean, those are. To uh, that, that's who I would recommend. Like I said, then we're 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 cut uh, Southern Cross dealer ourselves. Okay, you know, and yeah, that's, I, I, I figured that on the podcast. Yeah, we that, and that's it was not because of saying, oh yeah, well we'll 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 just be a dealer for them to to have the logo. No, it was like I've, I've had Southern Cross vest for a long, long time. Now, I can't put down mm-hmm. the hardcore either. No, because I've I, had their vest for a long, run a long time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's like I run one of the original bay vests that hardcore made on M&M almost yeah, every the, time. Just, that's the one with the green felt inside of it and all that. We were talking to Michael about it a while back. Uh, and the only reason, like, I'm not – we're not a hardcore – like, we we became a Southern Cross dealer as soon as we opened. But I, And then I was like, well, man, what if I do hardcore? And, and but I don't want it to get to where it's tit for tat back and forth. But at the same time, yeah. also we've talked about doing several, you know. But I can't do several because I only know of two that really four R was another good one, but I haven't used them in a long time. So like I said, I, I have I, one of their cut collars that okay. uh, I've got from Cody and them. Um, oh shoot. If we can that real quick, it, when it does come to the vest, it's still on the same topic. When it yeah. comes to the vest, and y'all covered it on a podcast, and I, I told a couple other guys that came with me to listen to your podcast again because they came out with their freaking cut collars were like two sizes too big, and just and I said, look, listen to Dixie Doggers again, and they'll, they'll go over it. They got to get sized whether you're taking the dog there or bringing the exact measurements, but it's best to take your dog and get fitted. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of these new guys aren't doing that. No, they're just getting they're whatever. Just ordering it. Yeah. But like here but at the I store, I too. yeah, here at the store, we let people come in and try vests. Yeah. I had one guy, he was like, there's dog hair in this vest. I was like, well, no shit. It's been on a dog. Yeah. Some, I was, <laughs> like, was like, I thought not- they're brand new. I was like, uh, they are, but we let people try them on just like we're going to let you try one on. Yeah. Now, if you want a lint roller and you want to put some air freshener on it, that's fine when you get done. But this is a dog supply store. <laughs> Yeah. So, Pete, yes, I agree. People should make sure they fit. Yeah, that's um. I wish I knew ahead of time because I got, I still got. If anybody in Southeast Texas needs them, I mean, they can have them because I got some that won't even fit any of my dogs on the yard. I got you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I think that's y'all helped a lot answering a bunch of my questions. That's good. And, I mean, that's and trying to trying to help these guys out i can't really um i mean i have topics and i have a bunch more but i mean i know it's getting late so. yeah that uh now whenever y'all get a chance y'all y'all load up and come up and hunt with us and we and we might even catch a hog here and there don't okay. ever know don't never know it's a we got <laughs> we got a lot of different terrain here like i mean if you watch some of the videos like we might be in a cave in a mountain uh-huh. And then we might be in a swamp the next day or the same day. Or in some pines. Or or in pines or in agriculture fields. You don't ever know. Uh, yeah, I'd really like to do like a mountain hunt. I really would. It's it's different. We had some guys from, from Louisiana come up 
uh, a month ago, maybe a little month and a half ago. Yeah. And and they, that's what they want to do, and they loved it. I mean, we had a good time. Hunter and Kyle yeah. Baldwin, I think that's how you say it. I call them, that's the Boudin boys. The Boudin brothers. That's what I call them. That's, <laughs> that's my guys. I had a good time. They, I told you, know, like, hey, bring your dogs. Come hunt with us. Uh, it's it's not not a not a guided hunt. I don't guess you'd say per se, but it's like you can bring your dogs and hunt our property, catch hogs, do the whole damn thing right there. And I mean, it's whatever, something different. But the the, yeah. inv the invitation is there if you guys want to come up. That sounds good to me. And so y'all keep that in mind. Yes, and, sir. We will. And look, man, we we really appreciate you, you know, listening and being a being a loyal listener at that, and yes, and telling other folks about us. Uh, don't know, man. It's it's every time I get to talk to somebody like that, it just I don't know. I don't even know what to say. It drives me crazy too, because usually I got something to say. I think that's where the word humbling comes in. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, but if there's anything else that we can do, if you need me, holler at me. I will do so. You know what I I'm will. saying? I'll try to accept your friend request on Facebook. But if not, you got my phone <laughs> number. Just fucking call me. It's easy. Yeah, <laughs> or text yeah. me. Text me. Because everybody's going to listen. They're going to be like, he's not going to answer. So just text <laughs> me. So appreciate you guys. Thanks to, to, to your group and the guys that, that hunt with you for all y'all coming together and doing what everybody should do. Mm -hmm. that hunts we appreciate that yes sir i'll keep telling everybody and keep the podcast going that's it man well y'all make sure to get on there and like and subscribe and follow and do whatever the hell all that is on all the social media stuff tell everybody yeah that everybody. that is the i don't i mean this ain't uh, probably something i could talk to nate about but um I, of course, I see it on YouTube, but the only other place is on the podcast on iPhone. That's how I do them all. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's late as hell. Like, I'm not getting, like, the last episode didn't come in until, well, it was 94, whatever, the first one, which I, I'm pretty sure y'all did last week. It didn't come in until this morning. Really? Huh. On my end. And which, I don't which, know because they they are all numbered weird. It was your the part two. It was they're they're numbered weird on there, and it could be me just not. Was it on you? You said on YouTube. No, uh, on Apple. um the iPhone oh, the podcast. IPhone. Okay. I and, and it could be just me. It could be user error. If, if if you find out, please let me know. But I can't. My, I'm having trouble putting them in order. It's like putting the recommended ones first. Huh. And then I'll have to scroll and try to it's probably find a setting. which one y'all just did. It's probably a setting that you have on there. Because, I, I, see, I get yeah. dumb shit like that on mine. And I'm like, this yeah. ain't even what I want to do. And it's like, well, this was recommended. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, take me out of that algorithm, bro, because I don't want that yeah, recommended. Sometimes shit. they use certain metrics that they don't disclose to like basically recommend them. Like this one had the most downloads or views in the first seven yeah. days or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of directories which is like so basically like we upload our podcast to buzzsprout and then buzzsprout mm -hmm. sends it out to all these other directories like apple okay. podcast youtube spotify and stuff like that and so sometimes in that in between portion stuff can get funky it can get delayed and stuff like that so a lot of those directories have like sort filters and you can just go by sort and go most recent and that might line it out yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we download them ahead of time. Because when we get to the woods, of course, we ain't got service. So then I'll listen to it while we're running dogs. Cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, and uh, y'all make sure to go to. The, are y'all subscribed on the YouTube channel? I got. I got to get to YouTube. Don't know get not. your ass on there and be a subscriber. I need some more yeah. subscribers. <laughs> I'm sick of this I shit. I, I got all these other people following everything else with YouTube. Because we don't have no damn videos on there. It don't matter. Yeah, but the problem with YouTube is you can't click your phone off. That's why I don't like you can't shut your screen off or else it quits playing. Yeah. So you got to have YouTube premium. YouTube, so. You have to have I YouTube premium. for that shit when I can listen to it on podcast. You got to have That's YouTube fair, premium. And you gotta, then you got to be continue. bougie. You yeah. got to be big dogging. <laughs> yeah. I, I it, Mine is gone. I, I've been having to watch ads and commercials. I was like, what? what's wrong with YouTube? Kelly said, 
<laughs> we didn't pay the YouTube premium bill. I was like, oh, that's a bill? She was like, yeah. So how much is it? She's like, $20. I said, for the year? She said, no, oh, like 20 bucks a month. I was like, oh, I'm good with just skipping these ads. It's all right. <laughs> just hold up. <laughs> yeah, I can wait. Yeah. It was like, but look, you don't even have to watch it on you. Just go and subscribe and then don't watch it. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. Yeah, I'll tell everybody. I, I need mean, I need to get about a thousand subscribe. No, I got eight, we got eight hundred something is all we got. I don't understand it. Like, come on, guys, pick it up. I can promise you probably got more than that. They're just no. in the same situation I'm in. No, it's like eight hundred and so we got a lot but, of listeners. Now, don't get me wrong. But I wa- yeah. I pay attention to YouTube because I'm like, if this video of the podcast of us just talking has four or five hundred views. It's literally 10 times that on anything else or more. Yeah. Okay. So, so like if it's there on YouTube at 400 on Spotify, it's 4,000 or 20,000 or whatever, you know, it's, it's, so I watch it. I was like, if it's doing good over here, then it's doing real good everywhere else. So, but we, we ain't got to put all this in the the podcast episode here. We're just talking now. So (laughs) it's one of those deals, but anyway, I do I do appreciate all the stuff though, man. It's it's pretty cool. It is humbling. Because yeah. for a long time I thought, well, when we first started it for the first year, it was it was fun. And then it got to a point where it was when we were videoing all of them, that was fun. But it was a lot of time and work for Nate. Uh-huh. An extreme amount of headache to yeah. coordinate people getting on footage. It, it was tough. I did something about the camera. Boy, they they cannot freeze up the biggest, baddest son of a gun there is. They'll be gung ho. They'll be ready. If I had a dollar for every time somebody was like, just got too nervous or they got too drunk, quite Mm -hmm. frankly, because they was like, they was trying to ease their nerves and then they got too drunk and then they got even more nervous. (laughs) It it turns into a mess. But there's a couple times where they didn't get too nervous and they was just right. Yeah. And there were some real good ones. Yeah, it's, there was some it's just good ones. way too hard to coordinate people at events. But once we start, but we once we started doing just the audio, it became people get a lot more we, comfortable. We could do well. We could do more too. Yes, a lot less coordination of yeah. effort. So if you got say three to four hours in each episode total, versus eight hours, I mean you can do twice as many, and that's what we've been doing. But yeah. we've been staying real steady with it, so. But if there's anything like if y'all want to hear t- certain subjects or certain topics, just holler at me or Nate and say, hey, you guys, I w- want y'all to do something on this. Oh, yeah. can, can y'all uh, can y'all by chance um, do a uh, like I, I know I, I listened to it because a lot of people recommended it, but it would help a lot on Dixie Doggers, of course, to do um, a Karen for hounds on a budget one. Yes. All we, right. Yes, we can do that. That's the that story of my fucking bunch. life. That, yeah. Literally, that is. Like, we, we can keep 50 dogs, 40 dogs up for what most people can't keep 20 dogs up. It's, yeah, it's yeah, work. Like it's it's work involved. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it mainly just requires an extreme amount of attention. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And and there's but there's there's ways to do it. And we'll, we'll definitely get into that. I, I, I would like to make a couple of videos as well to go along with it to show some of the process of the stuff that we do and what to do, what to look for. Uh, for instance, your feed. What kind of dog food do you feed? Well, through clients, I got the Purina Pro plan. Yeah. And then, um, of course, I just go up here to the local store and get showtime. Yeah. I can go to Jake's, but I hate bothering them all the time. Yeah, no, that's cool. The only reason I'm asking is because, like, it's – I would rather feed raw than anything. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. But we're also come to a position now to where we're able to do it a, a good part of the time. You know, we, we yeah. feed, a, feed a good quality feed. But we went straight raw from last fall all the way through winter into the spring. And I promise you dogs, it, it was like having, it was a whole nother deal. Those dogs were at another level. They looked good. They felt good. They hunted like it was something totally different. 
and yeah. and yeah. and I noticed there was a couple of videos I seen. Uh, I had got some notifications on of some people asking about their young dogs, and they would have like lumps or or bumps and stuff on their belly or inside their back legs. You know, uh-huh. once we stop feeding straight kibble all the time, like we cut a lot of that out. Also, with your flea and tick, instead of putting a lot of poisons out or chemicals, we cut that down to to nothing. What what, what about I've been doing the diatomaceous herbs? Yeah, that's oh that's, God, that's it. Been wondering. Yes, but you can't. You got you got to be generous with it. You, you can't have to be consistent with it. Yes, and that's the thing about yeah. it. You can't go through there and barely sprinkle it, barely do this. You got to uh-uh. put it on. Yeah. Now feeding them, I, I, you can be more reserved yeah. as far as feeding it to them. But like putting it on them, spreading it around them. I mean, as far as like cost effectiveness, like there's just like the. I don't think the residual effects are going to be as bad as ninety nine percent of chemicals. I, we can yeah. see the difference already because like all the old dogs we had before we got this group now. What I'm talking about is dogs ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, man, it got to a point where probably 50% would have a tumor of some kind on their body. Mm-hmm. Like once they got over, say, what, five, six years old? Yeah. They, they had yeah. something. Yeah, they would have something. And it got to where it was 50, I shit, probably more than 50%, really. It got to points where it was like, this. these are just tumors is what it is. And once we cut all those chemicals and stuff out, and started doing more on the raw, like we don't deal with that. Yeah. So, so it, it's really changed a whole lot. And and honestly, it's more cost effective. But yeah, we, we'll do one on that. Yeah, yeah. We'll but, de- definitely do one on that. Because I was trying to think of some other stuff, but we'll do one and uh, try to do a good, something that's good and in depth. And with, with- with measurements and not, oh, I would just recommend yes. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. Diatomaceous earth. You know, I, I don't know if I'm doing it right, but I'm doing a, a tablespoon for 50 pounds. Mm-hmm. Under 50 pounds, I do, you know, a teaspoon or whatever the case may be. Yeah. I'm not saying those are my exact measurements, but, you know, I'm just giving a rough. Yeah. Um, and that that's like the ivermectin. I, we, yeah. I use agrimectin pour on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like using it because it not only – Will help with your worms. It's a heart heartworm preventative. Preventative. All right. If you give it to a dog that's five, six years old and has heartworms, what's going to happen? You're probably going to kill it. You can, but if yeah. you microdose that dog, you will you can cure, cure it. it. Yeah. Exactly. So the whole I time. I did that to my first one. All right. We got dogs right now that, and we thought it was going to kill them. You know, because we dosed them up, and mm-hmm. man, they looked like hell for a few weeks, and then it's got just a little better, then a little better, a little better, and and now these dogs look like they did when they were in their prime. Mm-hmm. But and there's so many people yep. that are scared to do that. You know, so it's mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think it's something that could definitely use some more attention, and and one one thing I I understand why a lot of people don't go in depth on it is because if I'm telling you all this, I got to say, Hey, this is not for dogs. You know, this is, for, yeah. this is for cattle. It's a cattle, cat, you know, it's yeah. a cattle wormer, but I use it for mine. I don't recommend that you go do this, but I'm saying if you were to do it, <laughs> this is what I do. Yeah. yeah. But there's a lot of people who are scared to even do that. To even say it, you know, and, and and rightfully so. A lot a lot of folks have taken this 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 new shit that goes on in the world now. They take it to another level. It, they blame everybody for everything. They can never be responsible for anything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like like we were talking about with the catch dogs. Pat is one of the very few people I have ever talked to, and I was actually kind of surprised at that when he came out with that about the catch dog deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think it mostly goes to guys who used to match dogs or have been around dogs that game dogs that were used yeah. for what they were originally bred for. 
we we value a, a dog like that. Most people don't. They value a dog at three hundred bucks, and and they're bitching because they paid three hundred. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have an actual catch dog, then how are you catching hogs? Now you might catch them with a bunch of cur dogs, and that's fine. I've done it for years. Yeah. But if you got something that's a sure enough catch dog, that that has a good handle on it, that can produce pups, and that is consistent. How is that not as important as your strike dog? Exactly. People, exactly. I don't get it. Um, I just don't get it. I, I'm one of those. I like I said, I'll give it to you before I sell it to you cheap. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I'm a firm believer. If uh, if you want to catch dog for me, and this is going to be something that's just, uh, it's ready to go to the woods. But it is not a finished dog. This is going to be a dog that's a you know a young dog. He's he's starting to catch. He has a handle on him. He'll load and unload out of the truck. He's not going to be chewing on the doors and dragging you through the woods. When you turn him loose, he's going to go to the bay and catch. And you're probably going to be fifteen hundred bucks on the low end. Yeah. But it's going to be a pleasure to have. Now, if you want something that's going to be sure enough, and, and these dogs are going to have the pedigree to go with it, you know, so that's something that we're 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 going to be working on producing in the next year or so is to be able to just to make a phone call and get a a, a catch dog like that. Yeah, you can just call me yeah. and say, "Hey, I want a catch dog. You want male or female? That's that's simple. That, that's all. You, that's all I need to know." And you can pick it up at such and such time. When we get this get moved into this new building, that's when everything will start changing. Yeah. And so it, you know, so y'all keep your eyes out for that. That's gonna be something there. Well, all right, my man. Well, good luck on y'all catching that big hog. <laughs> we gonna try, that's for sure. I'm telling you. I, I'm just I'm not, like I said, I'm not an expert by no means, but I have found that if you give them a little time, that scent will lay down to the ground. Mm-hmm. If you if you drop on him as soon as while he's there, when he's running, he's not leaving any residual scent. All he's leaving is his scent that's in the air. It doesn't have time yeah. to settle on the ground to leave a track. Yeah, and so they can run him, but they're sight running him, and then they're trying to track him. And that's how they, a lot of people don't understand. They're like, well, man, he's only 400 yards through there, down there at the creek. They lost him. Well, he got in there and stirred up the mud, the water, and all these other scents. His scent became weaker now. They're not running the fucking track. They're running a hog right up his ass. Yeah. 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 That's the difference. So that's just something you could try. You could, you could give him a little while after he leaves the feeder, give him an hour or two, and then go put on him. It's probably what we're going to try. We'll give her a shot, see what happens. See how it works. Just, you know, do it with the, uh, when you, when you get in the shank it on, I think it'll, it'll be, uh, be pretty cool if you did catch him for that. I would be very happy, trust me. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, we'll have that thing. I don't know when Nate's going to start taking uh, entries and stuff on the shank thon August so. 30th to September 8th or something like that is the dates on it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, as long as you sign up before August 30th when it starts, we good. Yep. As long as you sign up and oh, get yeah. paid. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Most right. definitely. Well, 10 for my buddy. We appreciate it, man. Thank you, Alan. Uh, you all got, right. Thank you all. I appreciate you. You got my number. Put it in there now. Yes, sir. All I'm right. going to get some uh, shirts and hoodies ordered from y'all. Get them to these guys. That... So. All right. Sounds all good. All right. Thank you. See you, buddy. Team for Mr. Allen. Pretty cool guy. Oh, yeah. That was good. I like the – he seemed like it, it, to, to only be doing this that short amount of time. Like, he's very knowledgeable. He's paid attention to 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 whatever he's listening and learning and all that. And he's, he's paid attention. So, uh, I think he's going to have a good run at it for sure. He's got a, he's got a good chance or a better chance than, a, than most. I think so. 
He's knowing the dogs and having realistic expectations is a big help. And patience. Patience is the biggest virtue that anybody can have in you. So, well, like we can do or whatever on this. It's been like three hours. We, we good. Cut, we, I think it's like we cut part of this out. We good. We we'll just know. wrap her up here. All right. Well, I guess that's about it then. And we, uh, like I said in the podcast, we're going to be in the process of moving to an, another building, and we're we're still we're trying to do enough of these to have them banked up so that way it doesn't interfere with our, any releasing any episodes. Same thing as always. If you know anybody or any subjects or anything you want to talk about, contact us, let us know that within the dog world for the most part. <laughs> and uh, till the next time we'll see you. Thank you. Hope y'all enjoyed that episode. Stay tuned for our new episodes every Monday and Wednesday for questions, advertising, or just a chat email Dixie one at gmail.com.